pig father. I am a pig. Ah. First sip of steel reserve always tastes like shit. Uh. Uh. <clears throat> What's up, people? Uh. Eddie or Thor? Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to fight someone tall like Thor. Um, but Eddie's built like a killer. I mean, if, if, if you wanted to build a body to kill people, you would look something like Eddie Hall. Oh. Uh. I have no idea. Yeah, I am looking lean. Father gave blood today. Um. <clears throat> my uh, my iron was sixteen point three. Which is a little high, but uh, you know, I got in there in time, took care of it. Uh, yeah, sixteen point three is rather high, but it, it's not like crazy dangerous high. <clears throat> it looks like there's a married couple down at the pool. I don't think I can go live down there. Um, so anyway, uh, my blood pressure really was pretty damn good considering I got all fucked up last night. My blood pressure was 130 over 80, like 132 over 82, some shit like that, which is excellent for me. Um, and my resting heart rate was 85, which is pretty damn good considering I was, I shit faced drunk last night. <clears throat> Father, is the Delray Misfits dead? Haven't heard anything. Well, Brad's kind of became irrelevant. Yeah, Web App 31, I, I'm, I'm getting drunk two days in a row. <clears throat> you know, this has really been bothering me, um, not being able to get in to give blood. Because I wasn't eligible until the 13th, and I couldn't get in last Sunday. Because I was, I believe I was on the road working. So, and I had an appointment yesterday, but they had to cancel because they were short staffed. So I'm just so happy to have taken care of my health, getting that red blood cell count down. I, I've told you guys this before. I don't give whole blood. I do what they call a double red cell donation where they extract your blood, run it through a machine that separates um, the blood, they keep the red blood cells, and then they inject your plasma mixed with a saline solution back into your body. And the reason they add saline is that's to account for the volume of the red blood cells. So you actually, because you're getting your, your, um, your, um, uh, fuck plasma and saline back you actually walk out of there with the same blood volume that you walked in with so if you've got high red blood cell count or high iron it's actually healthier than donating whole blood because you're 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 getting thinner blood uh father with a biology lesson yes Remember the math. If you've got if you've got sexual activity that involves more than two testicles, 
you've got homosexual activity, period. No, you, you can't question that math. If there's more than two testicles and there's sexual activity, you've got homosexual activity. Now, I guess, I guess technically you could have homosexual activity if, if, if each male only had one testicle. Why not lower your blood pressure as well by donating whole blood? Well, it, it really, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, bro. Um, you know, if you donate whole blood, you can go every eight weeks. If you do a double red cell donation, you have to wait 12 because you're literally donating twice as many red blood cells. So I look at it, I have to wait four extra weeks, but I'm donating twice as much. So for me, that math works out. And the, the nice thing I like about um, double red cell donation is, you know, people like McCuck are getting your red blood cells. You know, people that are undergoing cancer treatment that need red blood cells. <clears throat> Scatman says, everybody report Transform X stories for harassment and bullying after this. Why? What's he up to now? He's probably having a field day with that live stream on Muscle Sports Mag with me and Big Rob and Dale. <clears throat> no, you play to win the game is actually a famous rant um, by Herm Edwards when he was the head coach of the New York Jets. It's, it's, it's easy to find on YouTube, and it's outstanding. The math only works out in the short term. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a math major. I just know that I prefer to do the red double red cell donation. Because look, because they gave me my plasma back mixed with saline, I'm, f I'm fully hydrated. If I would have given whole blood, I would be technically dehydrated. I'm actually better than hydrated because I not only did I get my plasma back, I got saline. It's like getting an IV, man. Oh. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's exactly true. Oh, I don't really care about Eddie Hall versus Thor. I don't know where Lenny is. Lenny's live streams have gotten pathetic. What the fuck was that bromance he had about Brad yesterday? That was pathetic. I mean, come on, man. You're boring now, Jay. What the fuck? Well, that's because of the doxing. I, I can't get away with the racial shit anymore. How did your training change for strongman competitions, Father? Well, for one thing, I was I did um, I added power cleans from the floor. Um, I also did a standing um, press. Uh, I did those on separate days, even though at the strongman the clean and press is 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 together. But I just thought that I did the power clean. Um, on leg day, I treated power cleans as a lower body exercise, so I did it as a warm up before my squat. Uh, and I did the press on bench press day. Um, I was already deadlifting, so I didn't have to add that. Um, I started doing farmer's walk with a trap bar, that was an easy addition. Uh, I really didn't train for the um the keg loading because I didn't have any strongman equipment. I figured, fuck it. If I'm deadlifting, squatting, and doing power cleans, I can fucking load a keg. Um, let's see. What else was there? Oh, the prowl, the push-pull medley with the Prowler 2. 
I didn't train for that at all either. So really, really about all I added was power cleans, the standing push press. Um, and I didn't do a strict standing press because in a strongman, you're allowed to do a push press. You're allowed to use your legs a little bit. Um, I was already deadlifting because the, dead, the deadlift was, um, I believe it was Hummer tires for reps. I don't remember exactly. Um, and then uh, the farmer's walk. If you're doing, if you're doing powerlifting training, really add in a power clean and 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 a, and a standing overhead press. And, and you're well on your way for strongman training. Really, I mean, I mean, uh, take a look at what I just described is the way you, like shot putters train in the weight room. You know, they pretty much do power lifting, but they, but they also do the Olympic lifting and um, some standing overhead press. <clears throat> I actually like the seated front military press that that seems to be pretty comfortable if you find a nice bench that isn't straight up and down i like to have a little bit of of, of backward tilt on, on the on the military bench just for comfort on your back especially if you're doing them to the front you don't need to be motherfucking straight up and down whoever designed those straight up and down fucking military press rats is a fucking moron Thoughts on Lizard Boy serving 4.5 years? Ah, I'd probably be, I, I heard he's going to get transferred to a camp, which is basically minimal security. Believe you're allowed to have all your electronic devices. People are allowed to bring you groceries. I think you're in like a cabin. If you go to those minimal security camps, I think you're allowed to cook your own food and shit. <clears throat> Kind of, you guys remember the movie Goodfellas when they were all, you know, cutting up the garlic and making the sauce and having a nice meal? That was a minimal security um, federal um, camp. I, I think, um, I think the camps for someone who's not a violent criminal, um, they're less of a burden on the taxpayer. I mean, I don't know what it takes to keep someone in federal prison. But it's definitely a waste of our money to have a guy like P.J. Braun in federal prison. Never seen father do a bicep curl. Um, I, I prefer, um, obviously, I have no peak on my bicep because I always... Um, trained more for bulk to size and um generally you really got to specialize if you want to build that that short head of the bicep to build a peak um and i never really did a lot of that so generally now um when i do biceps i generally do um a seated uh one arm dumbbell concentration curl because from, from what I understand, that's the best exercise for the, the short head that gives you the peak. Mm. Oh. Guy Sisterano can bench 405. There's a video of him doing it. That's impressive. Hammer curls are the best overall. Well, yes, because hammer curls work all three elbow flexors. There's three muscles that flex your elbow. Two are in the upper arm, one is in the forearm. And when you're in a neutral grip, that's when all three are, are, um, are able to work. <clears throat> So 
So, yeah, I mean, it, I always hated doing biceps. Always hated it. So a lot of times I would finish my back workout with um, some neutral grip pulley rows. And I was able to get a really good arm pump doing pulley rows with a neutral grip. Now, yesterday, um, the gym I trained at had a unique piece of, of uh, hammer strength that I, I haven't seen in any other gyms. It um, was actually called the isolateral DY row. And I think DY stands for Dorian Yates because it was an underhanded row and your hands came towards your belly, just like a Yates row. And I'm not a fan of the Yates row. Obvi you know, you guys have heard me rant about people like Dale Chance and other people that, that, that say they can row 405, but they're doing a Yates row. I mean, for Christ's sakes, anybody who's big and on the juice can 405 in a Yates row. It's not like doing a real barbell row. So I've never been a fan of the Yates row. But, and plus, guys tear biceps doing a Yates row. Tons of bodybuilders have torn biceps doing a Yates row. Remember, you're no Dorian Yates. It worked for him. Um, you can't just copy people because they're successful. But I found that this hammer strength machine, because it is a machine, I think it's a much safer way to train the range of motion of the Yates row. Um, so yesterday, as my finishing exercise, I did three sets of 15 with a very light weight on that machine. And on the 15th rep, I held it. I held, the, I held it with my biceps in the flex position for a few seconds. Um, that's really all I did for biceps yesterday, is, is I finished with a machine Yates row, and I, I, I held the last rep um, with biceps fully contracted for a couple of seconds. Yeah, I love hammer strength. I'm bench pressing reps with 175 today. I'm not Jay Masters. Hey, I'm not Jay Masters anymore either, brother. Um, my last bench press workout was uh, 185 for multiple, multiple sets of 12. <clears throat> I think I did six sets of 12 with 185 and I got a good workout doing that <clears throat> see once you get old and you don't give a fuck about being strong working out is 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 more fun that's impressive volume in my opinion thank you appreciate that yeah um I, I'm sh on a Smith machine um I can do, you know, some people will call it 225 on a Smith machine if you got two plates on each side. But really, everybody knows it's not really 225. Um, on a Smith machine, I can do 225 for 10 sets of 10. Um, that That's a really, really good volume workout. It's the old, old school 10 sets of 10. What was your post-workout meal? Uh, I actually, the gym had a smoothie shop, and I actually had um, a shake, uh, my favorite fucking shake. You, you guys need to write this down. This is, this, is, this is father's favorite shake. Whole milk, chocolate protein powder, peanut butter, a banana, and oats. I mean, it's got everything you need for post-workout nutrition. Big Rob Fitness, motivation, inspiration, humanity. How's your blood pressure, bully? Uh, today, when I gave blood on the Big Red Bus, um, my blood pressure was like 132 over 82. Real good. 
and my resting heart rate was 85. Well, that made me even happier. <clears throat> when you're when you're a big fat 325 pound slob, um, it, it it's tough to get your heart resting heart rate under 90. Short yellow bus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I, you know, someone told me that Jonas. You know, you guys know the rat prick. Someone told me that Jonas said Jason Genova was in high school till he was 21. Whey protein is pretty homosexual. Um, it, actually, bro, um, I like whey protein post-workout because you, you digest it so quickly. But yesterday's shake was not whey protein. Um, because, I, because the name of the shake I got was Mo Mass. Uh, just M O mass Mo mass. Um, the guy actually uh, had a uh, weight gainer powder, which I believe is 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 not just strict uh, whey protein. Uh, usually, your your mass building powders uh, are usually going to have some calcium caseinate, which is milk protein. Mo Mass. Jay, you don't need a weight gainer. Yeah, I understand that, but I was post workout and I, I, I literally was sipping that, that drink um, while I was still cooling down from my last set. I mean, I still had my pump. So, really, I mean, what you eat in that 45 minute window after the gym. Uh, is not going to make you fat. I don't care what you eat. You got 45 minutes where you can have fucking Kool-Aid and Lucky Charms if you want. Uh, it's going to do nothing but build muscle. Uh. Dale has extreme awesome genetics and healed faster than Wolverine. Keep an eye out for the great Dale Chance. Yeah. I, you know what? You know what's the most impressive thing about Dale's recovery is um, how how he is able to train back heavy. I mean, because they literally, I think they reattached his bicep tendon with a screw. I mean, fuck me. You know, I mean, and Dale doesn't seem scared about pulling that fucking screw out of the fucking bone. That would make me fucking paranoid. Oh. Do you like purple drank, Father? Yes, I do. I think a four loco is, is perfect post-workout. Anabolic window is a myth. Uh, no, it's not. Maybe we're calling it different things, but insulin it, it is, is a double-edged sword. Insulin's going to make you fat almost any time of the day because with the exception of that 45 minutes after you get done training you can have a sugary drink in fact i encourage people to have a sugary drink post workout that's why so many college strength coaches hand out chocolate milk as the athletes are leaving the weight room because they're getting their protein and they're getting the the, the um the sweetener in the chocolate milk for the insulin release and Post-workout, insulin is your friend. The other 23 hours out of the day, insulin is your enemy. I hit a swimming PR today. That's impressive. I used to swim the 50 freestyle in, in high school. <clears throat> I couldn't swim any other strokes, and I couldn't swim any farther than 50 yards. I could go there and back fast as fuck. <clears throat> Lionheart says, I'm surprised father doesn't want to break the bench press record. Uh, honestly, I don't think my pec would, would hold up. I mean, uh, without surgery, 
you know, I've built up to being uh, my best with 275 is nine reps. Um, okay, that there's no world record there, but it's not bad for my age. I just turned 53, and I think I've done 225 um, for 15 or 20. I'm not sure. It's one of the two. I know it's, um, you know, so a, a guy that can do 225 for 20 reps, that's one thing. Trying to bench press 560, that's a whole different animal. Um, and, and, and honestly, the amount of drugs that it would take for me to bench 560, I could maybe die, you know. Uh, how long for you to run a mile in your prime? Uh, I don't know. I never ran a good mile when I was when I was on the track team. Um, I, I still have the record at Baker Middle School um, in Troy, Michigan, 1059 in the two mile. If you don't believe me, you can call the fucking principal and have him send you a picture of the record board. <clears throat> um, but I never ran the mile. Um, back when I ran track, uh, there were, they had a rule in place to, to protect the kids. Um, if, if you ran the two mile, the longest other race you could enter was the 440 or 400 meters, quarter mile. So I basically um, only did two events. Um, I remember the two mile run was the very first event. And then um, I used to run a leg on our mile relay which is one lap around the track, and that was the very last event. Oh. And then um, when I ran track in ninth grade, um, I, you know, I had started lifting weights by ninth grade track, and I, I had gained muscle, and I was not a two-miler anymore. Um, I, I just did not have the speed for the 440. Um, so I was trying to run more, um, eight, 800 meters, half mile, and I just wasn't cut out for that. So I, I pretty much lost interest in track, um, after ninth grade. And, um, and then lo and behold, you know, really became a good weightlifter. And then come 12th grade, I'm back on the track team throwing the shot put. I remember being in line, um, at lunchtime, senior year. Uh, and the track coach comes up to me, and uh, he was a good guy, real good guy, history teacher, and a raging Democrat. Him and I did not see eye to eye on politics, but a, a, a great man, loved the guy. Um, he came up to me, and um, this was very flattering, what he said to me. He, he said, I think you should come out for track. And I'm like, really? Have you seen what I look like lately? And he's like, no. He's like, I think with what you've done in the gym the past three years, you could throw the shot put. And I, I, I thought about it. I'm like, eh, what the hell? I guess I, maybe I could. And I was god awful terrible when I first started. You know, I was the typical muscle head, um, you know, just a, a, an oaf try, trying to throw the shot put with terrible form. Um, but I worked at it. I worked at it. I worked at it. And um, <clears throat> I basically I basically threw the shot put 30 times a day, seven days a week. So I was throwing the shot put 210 times a week, um, which is too much. But I was I was I was 18 years old. Um and I, I wound up um, winning our league, uh, winning our county, and I think at the state meet, I got sixth. I wasn't quite Dale Chance material. I did not get third. I got sixth in the state meet. Um, but I had a bad day. I, I mean, I pretty much choked. But I was new to the sport, you know what I mean? Um, there's no experience. There's no. There's there's no uh, excuses for choking, but I, but you know, hey, I was new to the sport, um, and 
I wound up um, uh, uh, going to Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I wound up uh, throwing the shot put in, at a Division One college and being pretty good. What was your PR distance? Oh, I think in high school with that little 12-pound shot, I think I threw 56 five or 50 56 five um and then um in college with the 16 pound shot put uh, i think my best ever was 55 11 you know which is not great not all american but pretty good what are your thoughts on speed work for strength love it Speed bench is my favorite day of the week. Absolutely love it. And I don't want to go into too much detail about speed benching. Um, West, Side, West Side Barbell has, has enough videos on it. If you want to learn how to do speed bench, um, they call it dynamic effort day. Uh, just go to YouTube and, and, and watch some West Side Barbell videos. Um, but basically, you're lifting a, a, a lightweight, relative to your one rep max um they do something like a three-week wave where week one it really depends if you're a shirt lifter or a raw lifter um and and the percentages are going to change a little bit um but when i was when i was training for that 500 pound bench i was basically what was i using 500 would have been my one rep max. Two. Oh, I remember what I was. I was using 300. What's, what's that, 70%? What percent is 300 of 500? I think that's 70%. Um, so I was, I, was, I was doing nine sets of three. That's 60%. Okay. That makes more sense. Um, yeah, see, my three-week wave, um, because, because at 500, you, uh, you can't do 70% properly when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're that strong. Um, for some of you guys at lower strength levels, your, your three-week wave could be something like 60% for week one, 65% for week two, 70% for week three. But but for, for, for guys that are benching 500 pounds, um, my week one was 50%, week two was 55%, week three was 60%. So prepping for that meet, I was doing um, 300 pounds um, for nine sets of three. And you're, you, you're thinking, you know, 300 pounds for, for a triple is easy. Yeah, but it's how you do it. Um, for one thing, you're doing nine sets of three. And, and you're taking under two minutes rest in between sets. So you're going fast. And the reason for, for going fast with under two minutes rest is to keep your nervous system activated in between sets. If, and um, if you wait around... Because you're not going heavy. You don't need the rest. If you wait around too long, your nervous system will reset. So when you're doing dynamic effort training or speed training, you want to keep your nervous system activated for that entire workout. So you got to keep the rest intervals under two minutes. It's nine sets of three. And uh, west side... Um, he breaks it up into three sets of three with three different grips. You want to do your competition grip, a wide grip, and a close grip. And depending on the athlete and your needs, um, really, or depending on your weaknesses, um, you can determine what order you do your three sets of three. Um, guys with weak triceps, um, I heard Louis Simmons say he likes to have them do their close grips three sets of three first. Um, I, have ex I have very strong triceps. 
So I would warm up my, I shouldn't say warm up. I would do my first three sets of three with my competition grip. Um, because it, it, if I went the wide grip first, I wasn't as able to generate as much speed. Um, I tried doing the wide, I tried doing wide first, then competition grip, then close grip. And I just wasn't getting speed on those first three sets. So I, I flip flopped, flip flop, I flip flopped the order of the first two. And I went with the competition grip first, did three sets of three with my competition grip. Then for the next three sets of three, I went to the wide grip. And because I was warmed up, I was able to generate more speed than doing it first. And then I would finish with the, with the close grip. Um, that is an amazing, amazing strategy um, to increase strength because you're never going to lift a heavy weight slow. You know, when, whenever I see a trainer telling a client to, to lift it slow, my eyes just roll and I got to walk away or I'm going to get in an argument. You don't lift weights slow. Do you throw a shot put slow? Do you tackle a, an opposing player slow? Do you hit a tennis ball slow? Do you hit a golf ball slow? Do you serve a volleyball slow? No, you don't do anything slow. So why would an athlete want to train with weights slow? Time under tension. Time under tension is bullshit. That, that's what people like Lenny use as an excuse for bad form. Now, time under tension might be, might be okay for building um, bodybuilding tissue, for building tissue, but it, it, it's completely unusable tissue. That's what makes guys muscle bound and no good at sports. Um, you know, I, I heard Louis Simmons one time from West Side Barbell, and don't think I'm some kind of Louis Simmons fanboy because a lot of the shit he says I, I don't agree with. But man, is he fascinating? Um, if you listen to a Louis Simmons video and you and 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 you think five things he says are stupid and five things are incredible, well, shit, you just gained five things. So you don't need to listen to everything he fucking says. But Louis Louis said one of the things we train here at West Side is we adapt the technique of the exercise to decrease time under tension, okay? Everyone else is telling you to increase time under tension. Louis Simmons says, no, no. He says, you want, you want to use a technique that decreases the time of tension to, to the, the, the least it can possibly be. Because he said, the more time you're under tension, the more time you have to fail at that lift. And that just made a fucking light bulb go off over my head. Right, right. If you're locking something out slow, there's more time for you to fail. Whereas if you blast a lift, if you guys have seen my 500 that Andrew filmed at the Boynton Bar Beach Club, Barbell Beach Club, geez, I fucked that all up. Um, I nailed that 500. That's how you want to nail lifts in a meet. You want to prepare to fucking destroy your singles. Just destroy them. You don't want to struggle. You don't want to give yourself fucking time to fail. Time under tension is the, the biggest misnomer in, in, in the iron sports. Yeah, Kluwer's 650 is incredible. I got to get up and get a beer without you guys seeing how fat I am. Oh. 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 Father is hunky. Thoughts on modern why modern goth women are overweight. Um, these, these kids in their mid-20s, are they millennials or are they Gen Z? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, they're one of the two. But the, these, these, these people in their mid-20s, the, the men, 
the men are being bullied. Zoomers. Um, the men are being bullied. If, if they don't accept a, a heavy woman, they are called all sorts of fucking nasty names. And, and it, 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 it's really sad what's happening to the American male. I don't know if it's going on in other countries. But this war on what they call toxic masculinity, um, thank God it's not happening in, with, with, with country folk. <laughs> it Marxist, Father. Well, look, they want you to think uh, admiring a woman with a with a trim body makes you a misogynist. What the fuck? No, Treater or Treader, whatever your name is. I did not get the vaccine. Shaburnger. Favorite dog is definitely the Labrador Retriever. I got to get my glasses. Oh, Shaburnger. I can see this phone so much fucking better. <clears throat> Jack Russell Terriers are cool. Yeah, I like a Jack Russell Terrier. I don't know if I would own one. Um, I, I think I, I think I uh, babysat my buddy's Jack Russell when he went on vacation. I think I had a Jack Russell for a week when I lived in Michigan. He was cool. He got along with my two Labradors. Who's talking shit about PJ at the Olympia? Me and PJ are cool, man. PJ might not be very happy with me right now because of the trolling we've been doing on uh, Guy Sisterano. But I don't know what PJ was thinking, getting that little Napoleon complex motherfucker to do his uh, cardio q and I mean... PJ built up a following. It took him a couple years to get the following he's got. And, and Guy Sisterano comes in there in two weeks and destroys it. <clears throat> Guy may be the most insecure bodybuilder I've ever seen, and that's saying something. Yeah, he is. He's terrible. I mean... Oh, nobody wants to listen to a short guy talk about how awesome they are. I mean, come on, man. Father, will you bring back the mustache? I could. My clippers are down in my truck. What are your biggest lifting and diet mistakes? Well, beer is my biggest diet mistake. That's a no-brainer. Napoleon was average height in his day. I don't think he was average height. I think he was short. Oh. Oh. Father, what do you consider girl weight for each lift? I don't know. I don't even think of it like that. Really, It's really relative to the athlete. Napoleon was not 5'8", and neither is Dale. Guy overtly goes out of his way to look tough. <laughs> yeah, Guy, man, he... He he's lucky those those guys at the gym that he yelled at while he was doing hack squats didn't beat the fuck out of him. <clears throat> you 
you, you look at the look on those guys' face, like they were in shock. They weren't scared of him. They were in shock that someone is that rude and that full of themselves. They weren't scared of him. You can see that on their face. Like they're like, what? Like, huh? Yeah, I don't know who he thinks he is. It's little dwarfs like that that have to have to go to private gyms like that. Uh, who's that little dwarf that was the uh, 212 Mr. Olympia all those years in a row? He's like that, too. The one guy said, it's a public gym, bro. Exactly. Hey, Lee Priest, I like Lee Priest. Um, Lee Priest is a dickhead. And that's one of the things I like about him. I don't see Lee Priest as being a dickhead like Guy Sisterano. Lee Priest is a good kind of dickhead. Yeah, Flex Lewis, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Of all the short bodybuilders, um, my all-time favorite has to be Franco Colombo. I mean, my God. I, I, I studied that guy's, uh, that guy's workout routine and tried to copy it. Uh, I still do bent over barbell rows the Franco Colombo way to this day. Um, but uh, second would have to be Lee Priest. And then all the other short guys suck. Uh, I I kind of like Greg Valentino. I you know I I I think he's he seems like a good guy. You know I don't know him. Um, I think when he doesn't know something for sure, he keeps his mouth shut, and that's the sign of someone who is either intelligent or maybe got the shit beat out of him back in the day. Um, Lee Labrada. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Lee Labrada. He wasn't one of my favorites. <clears throat> but no, I, I like Greg Valentino. If he isn't educated or 100% sure of something, he keeps his mouth shut. You know who I don't like on that show? Um, Jimmy the Bull, I think, is funny as fuck. Um, the one I don't like on that show, and this is going to shock everybody, because I, I like his politics, is that John Romano, you know, Romano is, is a hardcore right winger um, like me. So you'd think I would like him. But man, I don't like that guy. He is a fucking prick. Who the fuck does John Romano think he is? Johnny Romano. Fuck him. What, he, he thinks he, what, he, he, so he worked for a bodybuilder magazine and so he thinks he's a tough guy? Oh. oh, Romano is a bully. I don't think you could call him a bully. Isn't he a little short guy? I mean, no one's going to let a little short guy bully him around. Yeah, I know Big Rob is on there. But no, I, I, that John Romano, he, he said some shit about me. And... He got some bad information from a guest that was on that show. And um, I, I'm not even going to name the guy's name because he doesn't like anybody talking about him. But um, a real good friend of Lenny's um, was a guest on that show. And um, he, 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 had, he had these guys going about the shit I said about Brad's daughter. And half of it wasn't true. And... You know, yes, I called her a retard, you know, you know, I, I, I said a lot of bad things, but the shit that he was telling these clowns on the um, um, Met RX or whatever, or RX Muscle After Hours, um, he said a couple of things that are misquotes and not, not, not at all true. And that John Romano uh, fucking started talking shit about me and... You know, it's one thing if you got your facts straight and you talk shit, but he was going off the words of someone else and then talking shit based on that.
Michigan plays at uh, 5.15 tonight. They play uh, Tennessee. Big game, 5.15 tonight. If Michigan wins and makes it to the Sweet 16, I will be so fucking happy. Father picking a fight with Romano, it's sick. No, I don't want to fight that guy. I'm probably a foot, fucking foot taller than him. Um, but I, he shouldn't be talking shit based on shit that isn't even true, that he got third person, you know? <clears throat> I'm sure you guys are going to clip this and send it to him. Fuck him. Fuck John Romano. I, I know I know what he said. I don't even want to... He, he... He... The person that was on the um, the guest that was on RX Muscle told those guys that I was saying people with retarded children should drown their children. Okay? That isn't what I said. Okay? I don't want anyone to go out and drown their children. I didn't say children. I mentioned euthanasia of a newborn infant. Euthanasia of a newborn infant that's obviously defective is 100% different than, than telling people to kill their children. I mean, if you've got a nine-year-old retired kid, I don't want you to go out and kill your nine-year-old. But I brought up the fact that, you know, hey, maybe that child should have been, you know, put, it, put in a bucket of water at birth. I, 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 don't, I don't see talking about birth euthanasia at, at birth is not the same as talking about killing children. Some of you guys may disagree with me. Some of you may agree with me. It's Spartan life, baby. Right, right. If a child comes out grotesquely defected um, and you realize they're not going to have much of a life and they're going to be a burden on the parents or society, you know... <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I didn't put it in the nicest words. Yeah, I, I did say maybe they should have been drowned in a five-gallon bucket. But I did not say people with retarded children should kill their kids. And John Romano went off on me saying what a piece of shit I was and, and that Lenny and, and, and Mr. C, or is that his name? That, or Mr. G? He's like, instead of Lenny and Mr. G fighting each other, they should go find that Jay Masters and, and gang up on him. Fuck you, Johnny Romano. Do it yourself, you pussy. Why are you trying to get fucking Lenny and Mr. G to track me down? You're a fucking pussy. Cuckold. Yeah, I said it. You're a cuckold. Tell them Lenny and Mr. G, they should call off their fight and come find me. Fuck you, John Romano. You're a pussy. Oh, my God, I want you and Lenny to tag team my wife while I sit in the corner with a cigar and a 20-year-old scotch. That's impressive. Uh, I don't want to be naked anywhere near Lenny. I don't even want to, be, I, I, even if I'm fully, even if I'm in a scuba suit, I don't want to be around Lenny naked. What if his testicles exploded and I got some of the matter on me? Order Sissy Six, Ray Romana. Favorite car engine oil of all time? Uh, well, I would have to say Mobile One, full synthetic. <clears throat> Thoughts on why Lenny does a live every night, Father? Uh, because he's running out of money or is out of money. And he can't afford the box of Cheerios and the pound of flank steak. He, 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 he's leaning on you guys to support him with the super chat. Uh. 
Hey, Brett, I, Brett, I can't read that comment because that guy will flip out if I even say his name. Lenny's lives are terribly boring. Top three figures from history, Father. Um, I think you would have to put Jesus Christ on there. Or I won't call him Jesus Christ, because then some people might argue. I'll say Jesus um, of Nazareth, because nobody can dispute the fact that Jesus of Nazareth walked this earth. I won't say Jesus Christ. I'm going to say Jesus of Nazareth. Um, he's definitely on the list. Um, I don't know. Uh, Adolf Hitler, John Lennon. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who the other two would be. Jesus Christ, Adolf Hitler, Julius Caesar. I think John Lennon affected the globe more than Julius Caesar. Remember when John Lennon, well, you don't remember, but if you've ever seen the clip, John Lennon famously said the Beatles are bigger than Jesus Christ. And it's a terrible thing to say. Um, and he, and he, and he, and he, a lot of people hated him for saying it, but he made a pretty goddamn good point. America had lost its way where the Beatles were bigger than Jesus Christ. So I don't know how you can hate a guy for saying the truth. What he said was true. More people were into the Beatles than reading the Bible in, 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 in the late 60s. The Beatles were cookie cutters. Oh, they were cookie cutters in the early 60s. But, dude, are you going to tell me that, that um, their later albums are cookie cutter? You're a clown if you think that. I mean, fuck. Look at the balls it took to, to come out with an album like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in 1967. Fuck, that, that thing could have flopped and made no money. They were not cookie cutters. Look, look, look at the White Album, which I think is 68. Fuck, that could have flopped, made no money. John Lennon beat his wife. Sing Pink Floyd for us, Father. Mother, are they going to drop the bomb today? <sighs> That's a great song by Pink Floyd, Mother. You know, I just thought of something while I was taking a piss. You know, I, I wonder why little Johnny Romano took such offense to my comment. <clears throat> and he didn't even get the right comment. He thought I was, he was told I was telling people to, to drown their retarded children. And really my, my actual comment was a, de dealing with euthanasia at birth, before a child even takes its first breath, before a child even fucking opens its eyes. Not, I wasn't talking about people murdering their children. But anyway, I started thinking about it, 
and it just just dawned on me while I was taking a piss. Um, maybe maybe the reason little Johnny Romano took that too personal, maybe maybe one of his kids just isn't quite right. Maybe one of his kids just a little bit defective. No, I've never had gout. Gout's mostly genetic. No, I've never had gout. Here you go, talking about people's kids again. I just brought up a fucking hypothetical, brah. Trying to figure out why someone got so butt hurt. Does Hamburg have weak hands? Obviously. His knuckles are like glass. Hamburg could punch you in the face and wind up needing hand surgery. Right, what Brett just said. It's just a theory. Right. Why did this guy get so butt hurt and go after me, half cocked, without knowing the real facts, without getting his story straight? Obviously, it's personal. So I find it kind of funny that, you know, I can sit here with a cold beer in my hand and, and come up with a theory of why he's so butthurt. Maybe he's got a defective child. And then I can just grin and have a sip of beer. Uh, see how good that was? People get real butt hurt about their kids. I don't have kids, so I think it's funny. Uh, thoughts on PMs and movies. Um, hey, Denzel Washington's probably never made a bad movie. Denzel is the man. Thoughts on Mel Gibson? Um, one, he he's one of my top five. Uh, I I got a list of um, of actors um, that that I think are the bomb, and um, they all happen to have blue eyes because I have blue eyes, and um, they are. Uh, you guys help me out here. Mel Gibson, Clint Eastwood, Paul Newman. Who am I missing? Clint, Mel, Paul Newman. Oh, and um, yeah, John Wayne did have blue eyes, but he's not on my list. Steve McQueen. Thanks, Bob Swags. Steve McQueen. That's that's my Hollywood Mount Rushmore. Steve McQueen, Clint Eastwood, Paul Newman, Mel Gibson. Shit, I can't even remember five names. Ugh. Father, which minority is worst at parenting? I'm not going to answer that question, but I, I will. I will make a statement um, opposite of what you're asking. Um, it, in the United States of America, at least, because that's really all I know. I'm not going to argue or talk about other parts of the world where I don't know what I'm talking about. But I can goddamn guarantee you, in the United States of America. The, the people that are doing the best right now to raise their children are the Hispanics. And, and you're going to say, Jay, what the fuck? How can a wetback Mexican be the best parent in America? I'll tell you why. Because they have God. Because they have two parents in the household.
he says Asians. I disagree with that. If, if you were going to fucking put together a, a rifle squad of Marines, would you want a bunch of Asians or a bunch of fucking Spanish-speaking people? Corporal Sanchez, Corporal Rodriguez. Favorite PM, O.J. Simpson. No, the, the Spanish people are, you make a good point. The, the, Spanish, the, the Asian people, they, they, they do stay married. And there are more um, uh, uh, two-parent households. Um, but they don't have God. They got Buddha or whatever they got. Um, whereas the Spanish, they got Jesus Christ. I mean, you see a minivan at, at Walmart, they got Jesus on the fucking dashboard. All right. Um, and, and that woman might be five foot three, 200 pounds. And her, her, she's, you know, her husband's a little bit taller, but skinny as fuck. And he does whatever she fucking says. And you might say he's cuckolded. Eh, he still gets his time to have his beers with his buddies because as long as he's going to work, paying the bills, and being a good father, she's not going to break his balls too much. And, and, and Asians, I don't think Asians really have that um, that free time in their in their in their sociology. You, you know, you don't you don't see a bunch of Asian men. In, in the backyard, you know, cooking a pig, drinking beer, and, and kicking around a soccer ball. I mean, they're, they're completely cuckolded, Asian men. Spanish men at least drink beers, you know, barbecue, kick a soccer ball around. Oh. Well, they're only allowed one child per household. Well, no, we were talking about in America, brah. In America, Asians in America are free to have as big of a family as they want. But I agree. Asian Americans, um, they don't have the divorce rate of the whites or the blacks. Uh, Mexicans work hard too. Yeah, I. I mean, Asians work hard too, but uh, they just do different work. I mean, I can't put microchips in the in the back of a TV or build a watch. Oh. Uh, uh. How many illegitimate children do you have, Jay? Not enough. You know, I, 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 I said this to my girlfriend the other day, Linda. Um, I, I told her, I, I, I said, I said, if 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 if, if some thirty-year-old kid, and I call people thirty kids, um, if some thirty-year-old kid walked up to me and said. You're my dad. I'd be happy as fuck. Oh, I'd be happy as fuck. If someone 30 or 25 walked up to me and said, you're my dad. Fuck yeah. I'm down for that. Let's do it. <clears throat> Father, I am blue-eyed master race like you. 
What does it say about someone's race if they grow a white beard? Is that supposed to be good? Uh. Pierce Brosnan says yes. Why did Brad throw those chains? Because Brad hates himself. Brad, Brad is a self-loathing person. He hates himself. That's, that's why he attacks others. <clears throat> Are you and Dale cool now? Me and Dale have been cool for years. I like making fun of Dale, and, and honestly, I don't think Dale minds as long as it, it, it's not too personal. He's a good sport. Oh, my God. Scatman, Chevrolet C10 with a LSX or 572 engine. Ooh. Now, when you're talking LSX, are you, are you talking about um, an LS motor that, that's um, 7.0 or, or maybe even a 455 or 454? Actually, I, I think um, depending on the year, I, I'm not I'm not down with putting an LS motor in an older truck because then you got to upgrade the fuel system and there's a big a lot of pain in the ass. I mean, I, I'd rather I'd rather put in an old school big block, honestly. But um, in a new truck where where the LS motor was standard. Oh, I th I think I think putting in an LSX um, seven liter is the way to go. I I don't in a new truck you can't beat um, that LS seven that, that that came in the in the um, the old Z06 Corvette the the four twenty seven seven liter. That's that's one of the, that's probably one of the most legendary engines ever produced. Was that that seven liter Z06 Corvette engine? I can beat the LS7. LSX is a 454. Right. It's it's a it's an LS engine that's been sleeved and stroked. I gotcha. <clears throat> I just want to make sure we were talking about the same thing. I believe you can get an LSX and a 427 as well. It doesn't have to be a 454. Like if I wanted an LSX and I, I told the guy, hey, for my racing class, for what my car weighs, I can only have a 427. You can get an LSX and a 427. LSX is the 7.3 liter. Now you're losing me. 427 is 7 liter. 454 is a 7.4 liter. Ugh. Favorite PM star? OJ Simpson? Denzel Washington? Big Rob called the hospital in Lenny because of them making fun of him. Okay, I that's a weak motive, okay? I'm not saying Rob didn't do it. You you guys that watched the Muscle Sports Live yesterday on, on Joe Piataro's um, channel, I was just playing devil's advocate. I I know in, in a court of law, uh, if you don't have a decent motive, you're never going to sell the jury. It can look like Rob did it. 
smell like Rob did it. But it, seriously, what was his motive? L L Lenny made fun of him? Eh. 454 equals 7.3. Well, son, I I, I, I don't want to argue with about that. Um, I just know that a, a Pontiac 455 is a 7.5 liter all day long. And the 454 big block has always been called a 7.4. Um, so, but you're talking small blocks. Maybe there's a little bit different when you're talking about small blocks. It's not. It's nothing to argue about. We're talking about a tenth of a liter. I don't. I don't know. You, you got to have motive. You got to have motive if you want to sway a jury. I don't. I don't see Big Rob Fitness is is having the motive to get Lenny fired. I mean, out of the blue. Rob's just going to wake up and be like, that faggot Lenny, he shouldn't be sucking black dick and, and, and taking care of people in the hospital. I'm going to get him fired. I mean, who wakes up and has those kind of thoughts? Thoughts on Big Rob doing two-a-day workouts. I would never do a two-a-day. Every time I do a two-a-day, or every time I plan on doing a two-a-day, it never works out. No, Rob, Rob doesn't have a motive, okay? Did he have a motive to call the police on, on um, Cassidy Campbell? Yeah. Hell yes. I can provide a motive for him calling the police on, on, on Cassidy Campbell. I can provide a motive for him calling the police on Joe Piataro. Just about everything Rob has done, I can supply a motive. If, if, we were gonna pro if I was the prosecuting attorney and we were going to prosecute him in a court of law, just about everything that Big Rob has ever done or we think he's done, I could come up with a motive. But with getting Lenny fired, Le Lenny, I don't, Lenny was the last of Big Rob's concerns back in those days. I mean, I was talking shit about him. Brad was talking shit about him. I really can't remember Lenny saying too much or getting involved in that. I mean, You're not talking about a normal human, Jay. Logic isn't important to Rob. I understand that. And and and, and when Rob yesterday on, on yesterday's live, when Rob said, "Why would why would I go down to Florida and and train with them if I'm the one who got him fired?" And I looked right into the fucking camera and said, "Because you're a fucking psychopath." I, I don't think that's the proper term. I think they call it a sociopath. Um, but yeah. If Rob got Lenny fired and then Rob went down to Florida and tried to pretend to be friends with everybody, he's a full-blown sociopath. So, I, is he, is, is, is Rob a full-blown sociopath? Because if he's a full-blown sociopath, Maybe we don't need a motive for him to call Lenny's work. But I don't necessarily think Rob is a full-blown sociopath. I mean, I, I understand Rob's got some issues. Um, you know, I, I think Rob's bipolar, honestly. Um, and I think Rob gets into to manic um, states. Um, it, it's obvious he, he loses memory when he's manic. Because um, things he's done when he's manic, um, he, do, he claims he doesn't remember. Um, and he doesn't drink. 
that's different than when I'm drunk and I say I don't remember that because I was in a I was in a you know alcohol induced blackout. Rob doesn't drink, um, so if, if if Rob goes into a bipolar um, manic um, state and loses memory, um, you know, I, I could believe that, but I don't think he's a full blown sociopath. If if Rob was a sociopath, I don't think he would be able to maintain any, and I mean none, zero, um, normal relationships. Um, the 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 fact that he's not divorced, and the fact that he still has um, contact with his kids, I I, I I tend to believe he's not a sociopath. Um, Generally, sociopaths um, are eventually going to wind up with nobody. I don't care how smart you are or how good you are. You're, you're generally going to wind up with nobody. Uh, and, and, and Rob's not in that situation. Um, so I don't, Rob is probably not a sociopath. So, so for Rob to call Lenny's work, we're, we're we're back to the beginning. I I want to know the motive. Like he he called me a he 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 called me a name. He he called me a a, a a terrorist. He called me a Muslim. He 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 made fun of me. It's, it's a giant leap. Rob will call the FBI on a whim. Why wouldn't he call the hospital? I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, now it came out yesterday. Um, we were, we were talking about, um, Joel Piataro, um, got a, got a phone call from the police because of Rob and, and Joe admitted to calling them back, returning their phone call. Um, that's not in dispute. Um, I, I believe Joe 100%. Um, I'm, I'm here to say that it, I've never, ever in my life gotten a phone call from the police because of Rob. Um, and I don't know anyone else besides Joe who has. You know, I, oh, maybe Cassidy Campbell. <laughs> but, you know, Cassidy Campbell is a fucking douchebag. Everybody that got sucked into the Cassidy Campbell fucking um, thing, you're morons because wasn't Big J always a skeptic of Cassidy Campbell? I I I, I can't stand. You know, I've never met Cassidy in person. Just from what I've seen on the internet, I can't stand the guy. I, you know, maybe he's 100% different off camera. You know, that's possible. Not likely. Maybe it's possible. But I, 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 I just, I can't stand that guy. Um, Father's back. Oh, oh 
man, is my back destroyed <clears throat> from yesterday's workout. You know, one thing about Cassidy Campbell, uh, it must it must have been before I, I, I did that stupid fight with McCuck in the park when everybody was talking smack. I, I, I remember C Cassidy Campbell's saying, box me. And I'm thinking, you know, you little fucking pencil neck. You know, I'm 53 years old. I'm fat. I, I, I drink beer. I'm, not, I, I'm useless in a boxing ring. Can we all agree on that? I'm useless in a boxing ring. But Cassidy Campbell has the nerve to say, fight me. A fucking bar fight is nothing like a boxing match. You don't have to be a fucking athlete or a, or you don't even have to be young or in good shape to beat the fuck out of someone. It, it, Cassidy Campbell's like, fight me. Okay. You know, maybe your skinny little ass could have your way with me in a ring with boxing gloves where there's rules. But I almost said a bad word with an N. I was going to say N-word. Let's do it. Let's go. I will I I will grab you by the throat and have you on the fucking ground with my 325 pounds sitting on you in, in under 15 seconds before I'm out of breath. Oh. Cassidy Campbell, fight me. Okay. I, I ain't getting in a boxing ring with you, you skinny little pussy, but I'll fight you. Fuck. Come come up to me sometime and start talking shit. I'll fucking break your fucking nose. Or I might throat punch you. Tough guy. Oh. Come at me, bro. Right. Right. Come at me, bro. I, I'm I'm never getting in a boxing ring ever again. That was the stupidest thing. I'll tell you what, McCuck, um, McCuck won the psychological war there that day. He, he <sighs> by by being such a little pussy, McCuck basically forced me. To either back down or or agree to his terms because he wouldn't he wouldn't talk to me he wouldn't negotiate he he he, he made that pussy ass video and he kept he kept making the same video over and over again uh, December twenty six uh you know broke back mountain where I train with my trainer or whatever it's called Clearwater Park or broke back mountain. Uh, Spanish River Park. There we go. Yeah, I, I should have never agreed to that. I I, sh I should have said this is no, 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 no. It's not your terms. It, it. Do you think most of the misfit fans are weightlifters? Um, it depends, brah. Like um, OG Jason Genova fans? No. Uh, misfit fans, yes. Man, that beard is getting crazy. Jay, what's the different factions of the misfits now? Um, it it, it it's pretty much um. Uh, father versus versus the losers club, it, it, and Andrew is not on any any side. <clears throat> and Andrew is at the top, neutral. And I don't even know if I want to put Lenny in the losers club. Um, so there might be three factions. You might have Big J. Big Lenny, and then you might have the Losers Club. 
and, and obviously we know who's who's on my side. We know who's on Big Lenny's side. But let me explain the Losers Club. Basically, their spiritual leader is Brad. Even though technically Brad isn't a member of the Losers Club. He's an OG misfit. Therefore, he can't be part of the Losers Club. But the Losers Club has allied underneath Brad as their spirit animal against Jay, if that makes sense. So underneath Brad, you've got McCuck, you've got Hamburg, you've got Pomps. And then you got their little cheerleader, Kim Haynes. Um, there's more, but that basically, if you want to know who the Losers Club is, watch a Kim Haynes live stream or, or watch a Hamburg live stream or watch an Adam McLeod live stream. All the Losers Club will be there, with the exception of maybe Pomps. Um, J equals Russia. Lenny is Switzerland. See, Kim and I are not at war at all. I don't think Kim hates me anymore. I'm not saying she's in love with me, but I don't think Kim hates me anymore. Um, but, but she is so lock, stock, and fucking in line with fucking Hamburg and McCuck. There, there, there's, there's no way for her to get out of the losers club. Oh, Kim is China. <laughs> no, but you guys understand that. Like, Brad doesn't want to be part of the losers club, Br but Brad is is like the spiritual leader of the losers club, and, and he he. He can't get out of it. The Bradford mob. And no, it's it's not the Bradford mob because while well, Brad could make those people into a mob. Uh, do you think Brad would ever want to embarrass himself publicly? And, and and say, well, I got McCuck and Hamburg and Pomps on my side. <clears throat> okay. Great. See, Brad's Brad's never going to play that Losers Club card. Brad is going to pretend the Losers Club doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Brad wants to bury that. Brad doesn't want to talk about that. <clears throat> Thoughts on Cuban falling in love with you? Well, you know, I would I would hold my tits together and let him let him come on my chest if he wanted. If that's really what he wants, he's my brother. Any more questions? Uh, this is great. Smush your pecs together again, please. Favorite novel, uh, Catcher in the Rye. J.D. Salinger. Favorite PM in the NFL? Oh, man, I don't even know. See, when I, when I look at professional ball players, I, I don't even see race anymore. Um, you know, they're, they're just a ball player. It's same thing with my Michigan. Um, you know, when, when I root for the University of Michigan Wolverines um, football team, I, I don't see race, you know. Um, 
uh, I may have mentioned this in my previous live uh, of, of, about, you know, when I was a kid in the early 70s, um, y- you had a favorite black player um, be- because you never, ever, you had a favorite player and that, and that player better be white or, or you're going to take criticism from everybody. And, and, and then you, you would always say, but my favorite black player is yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, times have changed. So I don't really have a favorite black player anymore. But as a kid, fuck yes. As a kid, I could tell you who my favorite black player was without even blinking an eye. Everyone, everyone, everyone in, in, in where I grew up, in 1970s suburban Detroit had a favorite black player. And it, it better not be your favorite player because your father might slap your face. I, I, I've, I've heard stories. Um, I'm trying to remember where I heard this story. But um, some, I can't remember where I heard this, but a, a kid's... A, a a a kid said, "You know, I wish I was Michael Jordan." And the father fucking hauled off and smacked his fucking face, and said, "Don't you ever say that in this house? You want to be a black person?" You look half dead. Actually, my health is excellent, brah. Today, before I did my double red cell donation, my iron was 16.3. So obviously, um, it, it's going to be in the, the, the healthy zone now. Still got the thing on my arm. Um, my blood pressure was 182 over, or 132 over 82. And my resting heart rate was 85. So go fuck yourself. You're like 12 year old with your groups. Grow up. They ask me a question, Fast Comply. They ask me about the different factions of the misfits. I answered the question. And Lenny's not Switzerland. Lenny is more like Italy. Ugh. Lenny will go. Lenny will side with whoever's buying lunch that day. That's a great analogy. Saying Lenny is Italy. Lenny is Italy. He will switch sides whoever's taking him to lunch. Chuck E. Cheese Ranch in the house. Chuck E. Cheese. I probably won't delete this one, Chuck E. Cheese. I haven't said the N-word, but it's still early. Lenny will switch sides at the drop of a flank stick. Right. Lenny, Lenny has no loyalty. Lenny will go with who's buying lunch. And I, I can't put it any better than that. Uh, I'm, I don't know if Prince Andrew is watching, but Prince Andrew is probably smiling when he hears me say, Lenny will side with whoever's buying lunch. Who got to Molly? Ah, oh, fuck. That's called survival at this point, right? Lenny's fall from grace has not been pretty. You know, how long has it been since Lenny got fired from the hospital? Because Jay, in all of his wisdom, I told Lenny, Costco is hiring. Go apply at Costco right now. 
And, oh, no, I got my attorney working on this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Lenny, Costco treats their people right. I, 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 I don't remember what they were paying at the time. Uh, I know it's more than 15 bucks an hour, you know, probably closer to 20. I'm like, Lenny, you're going to get full, go to Costco. It's close to your mom's house. Get in there right now. You're still young enough. You could maybe do 20 years. You know, you'll have benefits in 90 days. Well, I got to see what my attorney says. Lenny didn't listen to me. No, Lenny did not get fired for doing Molly on the job. Not at least. Why did you treat Big Rob with any respect last week? Hey. Big Rob. Big Rob is like an abusive husband. You never know what you're going to get. He might come home with a dozen roses and a box of chocolates, or he might come home drunk and beat the shit out of you. So, you know what, I, I, I don't want to, I mean, I, I, I don't want to agitate Big Rob. I'm not afraid of Big Rob. There's nothing Big Rob can do to hurt me. I don't want to agitate the guy because, you know, he's got his own issues. Conservative Cuban is, that's not the real conservative Cuban saying going live later. To everybody that's real friends with the Cuban knows Saturday is family day with the Cuban. Sounds like everyone is afraid of Big Rob. Now, I'm not afraid of the guy. Fuck. When he's not in one of his manic states, he's, he's, he's a good guy. But you don't know when the switch is going to get flipped. He's bipolar. Oh, the Cuban says, it's me, brah. No way. I don't think that's a Cuban. Because I, I know Saturday is the only night that him and his wife get to be together. He would never go live on a Saturday. Prince Andrew killed the misfits. That's not true. You, you can't blame the demise of the misfits on one person. <clears throat> Thoughts of chicken wings as a protein source. Um, if, if you're lean and can handle the fat, go for it, brah. Did Prince Andrew run away with the money? Um, I'm not allowed to talk about that. Um, Vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, from my attorney. Andrew is when witness protection. Oh, uh, yeah. Andrew has an FBI agent parked outside his condo 24-7, 365, because th they have information that, that, that he's a retired serial killer. They just have no evidence. You eat abalone? I've never heard of abalone. What is abalone? Does stretching help the muscle fibers from going brittle? No, I... Oh. Rob just wants to be loved like he's never been hurt before. Right. I don't think Rob has those thoughts.
Ickle and Dickle. <sighs> oh, Jesus. That's funny. So people are threatening my workplace because I'm drinking in a hotel room. Oh, boy. I'm not allowed to be drinking in a hotel room anymore. I'm going to have to end this live. I'm going to have to quit drinking. Oh. Holy shit, guys, I got to go. My work is calling. Schaberger says, Father, why do chicks love Nazis? Well, I think it has something to do to do with masculinity and fashion. I mean... The Nazis, I mean, as much as you hate them, and, and, and as terrible of people as they were, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but were not the Nazis the best dressed men of fucking World War II? Uh-oh. Nazism is so alpha male. I mean, it, it just is. Those Hugo Boss uniforms were nice. Is that who made them? I don't know. Remain nameless. It was not Hugo Boss, but Boss. I don't know. But the 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 World War II era German outfits were outstanding. Anybody who says anything different is a clown. Yeah, they... Yeah, they looked alpha. Exactly. I think the, the closest thing we have um, to, to World War II era um, German attire in the United States is um, motorcycle cops. Motorcycle cops look like Nazis. When you combine, here's the, the I, I, can, I can really sum up um, 
Nazi style real quick. And it all starts with the lower body. You combine parachute pants with motorcycle boots. Okay? That's a winning combination. Combining motorcycle boots and parachute pants. Right. Blue STI says, ha ha, that's funny. Well, it's true. Father, my neighbor was in the SS. Oh, good. I could probably take this off. I don't want to, though. Cassidy just posted an Insta story calling you out. Nineteen sixty four SS Impala thoughts. Um, cool car, um, just not very fast, um, very heavy. Um, I believe it was it had two engine options: a small block uh, three twenty seven or the um, big block four oh nine. SS stomping boots. Thoughts on best year's duster. Oh, geez. It, it, the duster is like Dodge's um, version of the Chevy No. Just a little cheap piece of shit. I have to say, I prefer a, a demon. Was the Plymouth a duster? Who made the demon? The, they actually made some demons with, with good engines. <clears throat> SS brain dusting, busting boots. Dodge made the demon. Yeah, dude. Friend of mine in high school had a demon um, with a nasty, nasty um, built 440 big block in it. Fast fucking car. I think that thing ran nines. You guys got to remember back in the 80s, nine second quarter miles were fast as fuck. Nowadays, you know, with nitrous and then the new tires, you know, people think nines is no big deal. Anybody can run nines that's got a credit card. Um, but shit, back in the 80s, nines was fast. Thoughts on a 632 big block. Um, you must be talking about Chevy. Um, I've, I've seen some 632s um, come out of uh, Sonny Leonard's shop. Um, I actually saw a dyno test uh, where they ran a, a 632 against a 622, um, which is stupid. What a waste of money. But um, they found that the um, the 622 actually made more power than a 632. And um, long story short, it, it's because of the rod ratio of, of the longer stroke on the 632, the, the, there's more side loading of the piston, which results in greater friction. Thoughts on a Cummins Swap 68 Charger? 
That sounds fun. Jay, what's a good modern car to buy? Uh, I think the I think the best car out right now is probably the Dodge Charger. Um, I mean, I, I'm a big guy. Um, I like a four door car. Um, I like big engines. Uh, so the the fact that you can get a Dodge Charger four door. Um, and it, it, if you if you get the um, SRT um, package, which I think they call the Scat Pack, you can get a six point four liter Hemi um, in the in the Dodge Charger. That's a pretty fucking cool car. I'm not a Dodge boy. Don't get me wrong, but but a brand new Dodge Charger with the Scat Pack with a, with a six point four liter Hemi. That, that's probably the coolest car you could go out and buy brand new right now. Holy shit. My old man had a Talladega with a 428. Holy shit. Radio Underground. My old man had a Talladega with a 428 Super Cobra Jet. He got rid of it before I was hatched. Well, he's a moron. Those are cool cars, man. I think those are... Was, was that the Kill Yarborough ed edition? Those are Torinos, right? Ford Torino? I don't know. Whatever. The 82 Cadillac DeVille is the largest trunk in history. I don't know about that. You think a Charger could take a Scat Pack Challenger with the same specs? Um, not necessarily. I mean, the 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 two door Challenger is probably going to be a little bit lighter. Um, but I could be wrong. It's, Mopars are big, heavy pigs. They always have been. But I'd rather have a Challenger than a Challenger. I mean, a Charger than a Challenger any day of the week. Chargers are just cooler cars. I don't care if they're four-door. I'm 53. I don't need a two-door. I'm not trying to impress, you know, girls in their 20s with tattoos that are still bartending. Do you consider yourself homeless? Um, yes. They say you're never homeless if you own a vehicle. I don't own a vehicle. I need to get a vehicle. <clears throat> Father, I started pinning test sipionate subcutaneously with an insulin syringe. That's that's a good move. Uh, uh, you need way less of it. I mean, most insulin syringes only uh, only will f hold about one cc, so that's um, probably most test sipionates are going to be about two fifty milligrams per milliliter. So. It, it, and yeah, doing it, doing test C two fifty in your belly fat. That's fucking awesome. I'm jealous.
Yeah, John Smith, I, I hear you, bro. It, it, hey, it, if you're going to do TRT, I highly recommend using an insulin syringe and, and shooting it in your belly fat. John Smith, I've done it. Oh, you could do it. Well, here's the deal. If you're on a doctor prescribed TRT and all you can get your hands on it is your legally prescribed testosterone, that's all you got, you want to make that shit long acting as you possibly can. So you start thinking, how can I make this work better? Well, you use a short needle and you shoot it into your belly fat. That way, it, your prescription says you're allowed 250 milligrams a week or, or whatever, you're going to get the most out of it if you put that 250 milligrams into your belly fat. Mm. Now, if you've got an unlimited supply of gear, uh, uh, pinning, pinning in your belly fat is... It, is is useless. You're better off using a, a nice big long needle and getting it deep into your buttocks. But for you guys that are on TRT that, that want to get a little bit of an edge over the next guy on TRT, definitely use an insulin needle and, and shoot it in your belly fat. That testosterone will be in your system much longer if you shoot it into your belly fat. Why homeless with a steady job? Um, because I don't live, I don't live with anybody. I don't, I don't, I mean, it, it, my permanent residence um, on my driver's license is my mom's house, but I don't live there. Um, I mean, legally I do, but I don't live there. Um, I definitely don't live with my girlfriend. She wouldn't stand for that. Even though when I go home to Florida, that's usually where I stay. Um, so, no, but I, I stay in hotels more than anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, technically I'm homeless. Now, if, if, I, if I bought a car, I'd, I'd still be homeless, but I'd be a little bit less homeless. Truckers should own a motorhome. If, if I had a motorhome and I, I kept it in the parking lot uh, at my work, then I wouldn't even have to get a hotel room. I just, you know, when I, when, I, when I need time off work, I would show up to my job, park my truck, hop in my motorhome, and go to an RV park, you know. That's the way to go. But I don't have an RV yet. I mean, I want a motorhome. No, I have no more ulcers. My stomach is rock solid. Why don't you have an RV, Father? I don't know. I want one. I really want one of those. Um, have you guys seen those Mercedes vans um, that, that have four tires in the back? Um, they're a Mercedes van that, but with dually uh, rear tires. Those are fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a Sprinter van, but it's a Mercedes, but it's... Uh, I don't want one with single rear tires. I want dualies. Uh, 
Yeah, Brett says big German van. Uh, right. I want to get I want to get um an adventure van. Um, that's built on the Mercedes uh, chassis. You know, even if you don't need it, I, I I want four tires in the back, just in case maybe you go to a campground somewhere and you get in some mud. I mean, rather sleep in Jason or Lenny's house when well, they both live with their mom. You're not watching Eddie Hall or Thor, Jay? No. Have you thought about getting a transport trans van? Yeah, I have. Is there money in that? Oh, Father. Pissing. You ever get lucky with a sexy cleaning lady? Dude, Adam McLeod married the cleaning lady at his office building where he worked. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you brought that up. Adam McLeod. You, when he was living in Orlando, um, and he was doing IT work, he he noticed that the, this old Spanish lady, um, you know, worked for the cleaning company that cleaned the office building where he worked, and she would bring her daughter in there to help her, and. Adam started doing, um, Adam started staying after work on purpose, working these, oh, long hours. Like, like, like Adam likes to say, a lot of shit going on. Just so Adam could see these Spanish girls. And her English wasn't so good, you know. He, um, but Adam worked with her a little bit and taught her, taught her, taught her a little bit of English. And um, Ad, Adam wound up marrying that woman. Adam talks about having a, a, a Latino wife. Well, yeah. Anybody can have a Latino wife if you marry the fucking janitor. I mean, come on, man. Right, green card. Schaberger says green card. Right. Right. Adam married the cleaning lady. It's fucking awesome. Did she see Adam in shorts? John Smith says he slaps her around. Uh, you know, Adam look, Adam's fat little legs look better. I just saw a, a recent picture of Adam. You know, Adam puts the, the phone on the ground to try and get those incredible angles and use his cinematography skills to try and make himself look like a badass. Um, yeah, that that one. Um, 
Adam's fat little legs are actually looking good. I, you know, Adam, I don't know if you're watching this, uh, but man, your legs look a lot better. You, you've definitely been working hard, bro. But I don't think you're eating enough or, or lifting weights enough. I mean, if, if your goal is to become a little teeny garden gnome, I mean, you're accomplishing that. Why don't, why don't, why don't you start pumping some iron um, and maybe eat a little bit more? I don't know. I, I'm not his trainer. My wife is Mexican. She looks like Scarface. Oh, fuck. Oh. Pee in a jug. Lenny, get the crack from Lou. <coughs> Lenny, get the crack from Lou. Did Lenny really do crack? I, I have no idea if, if Lou D'Onofrio is the one who got Lenny involved in crack. You'd have to ask Lou or ask Lenny. Lou's another psychopath. I don't even like saying his name. Rob Lynn Bailey, what's up, bro? How's your trust fund going? You buy any new Porsches this week? Must be nice to just live off your parents, bang some fucking hot pussy. Good. How come PJ Braun couldn't find love like Rob Lynn Bailey? Yeah. Would you anally pleasure Lantina Lynn Bailey? No, but I, I was just going to bring up like PJ. Why is PJ? So fucking miserable when it comes to his love, love life. Why is PJ going from bad relationship to bad relationship to bad relationship? And when, you, when your parents have money, like Rob Lynn Bailey, for example, you're supposed to just get a hot chick and not have a, 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 a problem in the world. I mean, I personally don't like Rob Lynn Bailey. Um, I, I think he's a fucking complete fucking douchebag with his fake rock and roll band. Um, but Rob Lynn Bailey, at least 
knows how to handle women. You know, he's like, look, my parents got the money. This is my money. We're going to live life the way I want to live life. If you want to live with me and not work and just be some, you know, bodybuilding bimbo who, who fucking, you know, has a T-shirt business where you buy cheap bullshit from China, stamp your Dana Lynn Bailey fucking logo on it and resell it and tell everybody you've got it your own business, that's fine. I can live with that. You, you can have your own little side job business and tell everyone you're supporting yourself. But Jesus Christ. Why can't PJ do that? Most shameful teenage experience. Uh, not sure. Maybe befriending black people. Uh, ooh, Gorilla Juice might send that to my work. Duxma or Bonnie Rotten? Ooh. Can I have them both? Bonnie Rotten definitely has nicer feet. Max Hardcore or Ron Jeremy? I don't even know who Max Hardcore is. Whoa. Celeste blocked me on Instagram years ago. Celeste is weird. I, 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 I think Celeste um, is, is the female version of Andrew Kalura, someone that was on so much gear um, that they completely fucked up their body chemistry and they're no longer the same person. I, 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 Celeste is a fucking weirdo, just like Andrew Kalura is a weirdo. I, you know, I mean, they're both cool. Um, but I think the drugs ruined Andrew Kalura, and I think the drugs ruined Celeste. Really, I, I could see Andrew Kalura and Celeste hooking up. That would, that would be kind of a, 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 a Boca Raton... Um, power couple. Andrew Kalura and Celeste. Oh, father. What time is it? That Michigan game's on at 5.15. Being weird, called weird by Jay is a compliment. Well, you know what I'm saying. Andrew Kalura is weird. Celeste is weird. And if, if you don't agree with those two comments, then... <laughs> Why are you not wearing a mask? Because I'm in my hotel room by myself. Father, stay away from middle-aged women that own large dogs. Right. 
More women fuck dogs than than anybody's willing to admit or talk about. Clara said recently, you only talk shit about him because you're jealous. That's not true. I, I wouldn't trade places with Andrew Kalura. I mean, come on, man. I wouldn't trade places with him for a million years. I mean, for a million dollars. I'm not jealous of him. I, I, I think Andrew's a decent guy. I just never liked him. Um, you know, that's just me. I never liked him. I never liked his sense of humor. Um, that's just me. It, it has nothing to do with jealousy. Um, a Andrew has a good sense of humor. If, if you like it, he's very dry. Um, he, he, he's somewhat intelligent, but but I I, I call when Andrew um, Andrew is like pseudo intelligent, like. Andrew, Andrew, I, I don't even think that guy went to community college. I, I don't think, when was the last time Andrew, like, read a book? Um, but but he tries to play like he's this intellectual. Because uh, he read the Bible a few times. And because he was guilty, you know, felt guilty because he sucked cock. Feeling guilty after you suck cock and then reading the Bible doesn't make you intellectual. It just makes you a guy that sucked cock that turned to the Bible. Right? You know, it's, see my train of thought? Sucking cock and then reading the Bible doesn't raise your intelligence. You're, you're just still a guy that sucked cock and then read the Bible. Uh, come on, man. He would have had the greatest bench press in history with proper guidance. I agree with that. His 650 raw with no shirt. Amazing. It, 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 it. The, the, the fact... The, the, the fact that Andrew Kalura was so stupid and naive that he let Lenny coach him. Now, 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 you know, 20 years later or whatever, Andrew Kalura wants to play the part of an intellectual. Come on, man. I mean, the guy's got no education, no career. I mean, what's he, I mean, you know, he, Andrew Kalura wants to throw stones at me? Have at it, brah. Once I'm retired, I'm going to buy your church and fucking bulldoze the motherfucker. Make your parents cry. Andrew is like a cat. That'd be funny if, if I bought, when I retire, if I bought Kalura's church and then I set it on fire. What, what if I filmed a porn in Kalura's church with Lenny being butt fucked by a black tranny? Then I set the church on fire. Do any of the misfits have a degree besides you? Uh, Great question. 
I believe Prince Andrew um, has a uh, bachelor's degree from the University of Connecticut, the Huskies. Other than that, you're dealing with uneducated fucking rubes. Right. Look at Brad. Grew up in the luxury of Boca Raton, Florida, and he couldn't make anything of himself. Brad's money, Brad's parents have the money. He could have gone to college, but but he chose to fucking flip-flop, you know, between relationships, you know, leave leave child, children with single moms along the way, try and hide in Las Vegas from his child support. College education is a complete joke. Well, I, that's a great topic. I agree with you. Uh, but look, I got a bachelor's degree. No one can ever take it away from me. Um, I, I did sports. I had fun. Remember, I was an athlete. So college was a way for me to continue high school. Okay? Why why wouldn't you do that? You know? But I mean some guys go go into the army or 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 go work on a factory when when they um gr graduate high school. I got to go to college and do sports and drink and, and 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 fuck sorority girls doesn't sound too bad to me i mean uh every, everyone likes to you know whatever uh Let's see your degree, Leo. Liberal arts degree, Jay? No, I had a Bachelor of Science, ass fuck. Doesn't matter. I'm a truck driver. But I still got that piece of paper. You know? One thing about a college degree, even if you don't go on to use it, no one can ever take it away from you. It 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 puts you a notch above the common dirt bag. John Smith called me an overpaid steering wheel holder. I agree with you. Dale didn't even finish high school. That's not very nice. Ugh. Dale claims he makes over a hundred grand a year at the steel company. Does anybody believe that? Uh, is is Dale's father in law his boss at the steel company? General education degrees don't count, Jay. Dude, I got a bachelor of science. N word. Dale finished third in his high school class. Oh. More people like Dale, though. Remember, nobody likes you, Jay. 
Okay. I I can live with that. Third in a class of three, unfortunately. Oh. How much you have in your 401k, Jay? Um, I don't know, two, three thousand, maybe four. I don't know. Dale can only count to three. Jay, you should teach high school. They would fire me after one week. Uh -huh. Jay played marbles at college. Get rid of your 401k and buy land, Jay. I agree with that. Oh, except I don't like the government taxing me on my land. I, I don't know what's going on with that transgender swimmer. Supposedly, you can see their cock. I don't know. I couldn't see it. But I don't have a good eye for a cock. Lenny said the same thing about Dale. Like, remember after the ruby, Dale, all Lenny could talk about was the size of Dale's cock. Why would Lenny talk so much about Dale's cock. Uh. Lenny said you weren't an athlete in college. Okay. If, if you don't think a shot putter or a hammer thrower is an athlete, then go fuck yourself. I I even have I I even threw the javelin and the discus, and I'm not trying to say I was good at the discus or good at the javelin. In fact, I sucked at those two events, but I could do it. I could do it. I threw the javelin in college. Uh, in a 145 feet and 11 inches, which is terrible, but it's better than all you guys could do. Oh. Revenge of the Nerd style. Actually, that's the old javelin. They, they they came out with new rules in the late eight or in the eighties because guys were throwing the javelin over three hundred feet. They came out with a new javelin that was much more difficult to throw. But yeah, I threw the jab. I threw the college javelin, not a high school javelin. Um, One hundred and forty-five eleven. Terrible. It's what I did. Talk about how you don't have any friends, Big J. Okay, as soon as you turn off your caps lock button, because anybody who types in all capital letters has low intelligence. That's been proven. Lenny said you only did bowling. Lift plate says caps lock is low IQ. Exactly. Stupid people talking caps locks. Hey, what's up, Ryan? I am Big J's friend. Hi, hi Ryan. R Ryan... Look, you are a good guy. You you stick up for everybody. You're sticking up for me 
you stick up for Dale, you stick up for fucking Hamburg. Uh, Ryan, I, I, I think you're a stand-up guy because you stick up for everybody. And then, you know, at first I didn't like Ryan because I thought Ryan didn't like me. But, but I noticed Ryan sticks up for everybody. You make fun of anybody, Ryan is going to stick up for them. I hate to sound like Hamburg, but Ryan is a really good guy. Rob is in the hospital. Ryan says, as long as the person is in my view, con correct. Okay. So now you're the moral police, Ryan. Come on, man. What are you, the ethics police? What do you, what do you? You you trying to be the Adam McLeod of the United Kingdom? Come on, man. We've already got one Adam McLeod. We don't need a second one. Lenny and Kalura are gay. Uh, still in all capital letters. I'm not going to read any of his comments till he turns that off. Uh, there's too many people in my pool. I want to go to the pool. There's people there. Go to bed, Jay, you're drunk. Jay got into college playing the most obscure sports. Okay, track and field is obscure. I mean, granted, it's not football, uh, basketball, or baseball, but track and field is not obscure. You're kind of a moron. I guaranteed the, the the best shot putters and discus throwers in your high school would have beat the fuck out of you. Because those are usually the biggest guys in the whole school. Got smokes, brah? No, I don't have any smokes. If it ain't white, it ain't right.
I'm about ready to go to the pool. I got a really special bottle for the pool. Oh, there's conservative Corvette. Hey, what's up, conservative Corvette? Is is there any truth to the fact that um, you're really Adam McLeod? Because uh, your previous, your Instagram before you became conservative Corvette was was Bayoni. Conservative Corvette, you really fucked over the people in the fucking chat group. Remember the squirt funnel, father? I have the same dream. Oh, my God. Squirt Bukaki? Yes. Conservative Corvette, you used to be Bayoni. Don't lie. Two thousand ten drive wants to know my current bench. Um, my most recent bench press workout was one eighty five. Um, for six sets of 12. So figure it out. Yeah, conservative Corvette used to be Bayoni, which we think is a McCuck account. Conservative Corvette, don't play stupid with me. You were Bayoni. We haven't proven that McCuck is Bayoni, but we know you were Bayoni. Uh. I will lift plates as I will guarantee you Adam watches your lives. Well, of course he does. And then, and then Adam messages Brad, letting Brad know every time I mention Brad's name. And then, and then Brad will message McCuck back. I don't care what that fat fuck says about me. Hello. I'm not McCuck laughing out loud. McCuck is Transform X. Well, we might agree on something. But you're not denying you used to be Bayoni. Yeah, McCuck's head probably exploded um, after he woke up yesterday morning or this morning to well over 50, 50 DMs asking him to go live and, and talk about me and Big Rob and Dale and Joe Pietaro. Come on, McCuck. We know you got 50 DMs this morning, you fucking stupid fuck. 
No, bro. Bayoni didn't do anything to me. It, it just... Ooh, I can I can see the architecture. If I were to go out to the truck and get and get my my trimmers, oh, I could do a walrus mustache. Conservative Corvette, I don't, I don't care. You you're just not trustworthy anymore. You are Bayoni. Father, will you smoke weed when you retire? Uh, that's a tough question. Let me have a second to think about it. Every single fucking day. Oh, conservative Corvette, don't play stupid with me. You, you are the old bull. Conservative Corvette, you know there were two or three guys in the chat that ratted you out, right? Laughing out loud. Okay, name them. Name them right here. Let's go. Come on, Conservative Corvette. Play your card. Play your card, motherfucker. I'm giving you the platform right now. We got 111 people watching. What, are you going to be coy? You're going to be coy? I'm giving you your platform right now. You could never go live and have 111 people watching you. You want to throw people under the bus? Let's fucking see it. Let's fucking see it. You fucking coward. You fucking pussy. Now we're up to 114. Galdram, Pasta Simon, to name a couple. Yeah. I'm really not sure how to respond to that because wasn't Pasta Simon um, originally Lake Cresciva. LC. Pasta Simon was LC, yes. What happened to Rich Piana's last scoop? I'm not sure. I thought scoop was back in action. Don't cry to me, oh baby. Matthew Durkin, that was creative. Dead end girl, dead end soul. Uh. Uh. 
Psycho We Social just said, feed my Frankenstein. Dude, that's an incredible Alice Cooper song. What's your favorite Misfit song, Jay? Um, obviously, Die, Die, My Darling, because I do it at karaoke better than Glenn Danzig or Metallica. Um, but I, I also like um, that... Um, What's that song where, um, I got something to say. Can't remember any of the other words. It's not Saturday night. It's, um. If you were forced to be a teacher, would you teach primary, medical, or high? I'd definitely be a high school history teacher. No doubt in my mind. Last caress. Exactly. I got something to say. I saw your baby today. I killed your mother today. See, Brad doesn't have that in him. I have that in me. Brad just goes along with it and just becomes the victim. Yeah, Last Caress is definitely my second favorite Misfit song. I killed Dale today. Oh, my God. No, Dale's my buddy. Dude, Dale is... Dude, Dale is my little buddy. I need to... I, I need to... I need to realize this and, 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 and stop fighting it and realize... To really fulfill my 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 future and, and and my potential at humor, I have to become Skipper. And Dale, I need to make Dale my Gilligan. Dale needs to become my little buddy. Because it, it, it's not funny when I rip on Dale. I, I've learned this, and I, I, I finally figured it out yesterday, that, that I am much funnier if, 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 if I take the Gilligan's Island approach to Dale, and I'm the skipper, the big, fat, overweight guy, and then I make Dale Gilligan the, the, the little dipshit. I mean, that's what's hysterical. All right, I'm Skipper, Dale is Gilligan. That's, that's what works. Father, please speak with Dale's accent, please. Uh, well, you know, Cornelius said I could get my pro card. I just got to get get down to the ruby. After we win that show, Cornelius is going to start preparing me uh, for ma for nationals. And after we win nationals and get my pro card. Oh, poor Dale. My little buddy Gilligan. I just want to I just want to put Dale in my lap and hold him. I'm ready for bed. Father.
favorite steak? New York Strip. Is Cornelius a dentist yet? Needs cigarettes. Dale is built like a bodybuilder that's never seen a bodybuilder before. Why would you say something so mean like that? I think Dale's awesome. Dale is a garden gnome. No, Guy Cisterano is a fucking garden gnome. Order 66, Guy Cisterano. Dale is the branch warren of the 2010s. I I can't stand Branch Warren. When I watch Branch Warren lift weights, I I I I turn into this old man gym teacher that just wants to scold him on his bad technique. Who the fuck is this guy? He Branch Warren probably has the worst um technique in any exercise he's ever tried. I hate Branch Warren. I mean, has that guy ever done a full rep? Has that guy ever stopped at the bottom or the top? Or it? Branch Warren is the ultimate momentum lifter. Like if you're a proponent of time under tension, Branch Warren is your fucking lab monkey. Your, your, your research monkey, you know, that's Branch Warren. He, he, he is the lab chimp for, for time under tension because that guy has never done a full rep in his life. Branch Warren fell off a horse. I laughed. Web Web App Thirty One. What exercise is Lenny going to desecrate today? That's a great quote. <laughs> Dale is three inch taller than Branch. I believe that Branch Warren's a little piece of shit. Fuck him. Oh, father. Yeah, I, I, I you know. Maybe my weightlifting technique isn't perfect. Um, but when I see a guy like Branch Warren train, I, I get insane. <clears throat> and, you know, Dale, Dale tries to deflect it back on me when I criticize his form. You know, Dale, it's not about you. Yeah. Dale thinks Dale thinks it's about him. Dale, it's not about you. It's about right from wrong. You know? <sighs> Branch Warren is, is, a, is, is a little piece of human filth that needs to be erased and, and his, his, uh, 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 
It's like Lenny reps. It's horrible. If you guys have ever seen fucking Branch Warren lift, it's like Dale and Lenny combined. It's horrible. You, uh, how he must be? Is it? Uh, is Branch Warren autistic? Because I think he must be. Wait a minute. I, I never thought of this before. Branch Warren has that stupid look on his face all the time. So I'm wondering if maybe he's slightly retarded. I don't know. Could be. What's up, Zach? Zach, why, why are you doxing Brad? Why don't you start doxing fucking pumps? Yeah, Branch Warren is 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 slightly retarded, and and people like Dale fucking copy his form. And you're just like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Like, yes, on yesterday's live stream, um, when when Dale when Dale said he's currently benching 405 for 10. Right. I I believe him. But he's only doing the bottom half of the rep. Dale is a momentum lifter. Dale is Dale is going to bucket off his his, his bottom and, and get it halfway up and then when the momentum runs out, he's going to take it back down to the bottom and bucket back up. Dale is Dale is the biggest um, offender of momentum lifting, L like um, that that other little short jackass we were just talking about. I mean, I love Dale. Dale Dale's a good guy, but. Poor Dale. Yeah. I, Dale and Branch Warren. I I you combine the two. I I've never seen worse lifting technique in my life with heavy weights. At, at least with Big Lenny, you understand the guy's old and frail and, and, and suffered a ton of injuries. So Big Lenny will do the top half of the range of motion. You know, and we can we can make fun of Lenny reps. You know, that's funny. Um, but Dale reps are worse because Dale only does the bottom half of of the, the fucking range of motion. Dale Dale is the king of, of, of time under tension. Dale's going to be like, well, Cornelius said me I could build more muscle tissue doing more time under tension. What? The fuck even was that? I couldn't even fucking read your lips through all that tobacco, you fucking inbred fucking hillbilly. Dale's Lenny reps t-shirts were lame. Right. Because Dale reps are the exact opposite of Lenny reps. Lenny doesn't go all the way down. Lenny only does the top half of the rep. Whereas Dale bounces off the bottom, uses momentum, and then goes back down to the bottom as soon as the momentum runs out. I mean, Dale is a worse lifter than Lenny. Dale, Dale, 
Dale's technique is some of the worst I've ever seen. It, it, it's worse than, than Branch Warren. And, and Branch Warren, how did that guy get his pro card? He, he, he built a physique on fucking insulin and human growth hormone because he was basically hurting himself, lifting like a retard every day. Wow, I've never thought of that before. He he used insulin and human growth hormone to heal himself from being a retard. That makes sense. Makes total sense. Fuck you, Branch Warren. And fuck you, Johnny Romano. Yeah, Dale's a great guy. I met Dale. Dale is Dale is an incredible person and human being. I just don't I I, I don't like the way he lifts. I don't like the way he competes. I don't like the way he lifts. But I can't say anything bad about the man personally. I mean Dale is a great guy. Dale, I like Dale, but when it comes to lifting, he's a fucking cheater. And, and, and when it comes to competing, he doesn't play to win the game. He, he, he tries to get on stage against heavyweights because he thinks he can make other people look bad. And then he winds up getting third. I mean, that's not him, brah. Yeah. Dale, Dale could shut me up really quick. Uh, if he dieted down to 198 and started getting a bunch of first place trophies. If Dale finally realized, see, Here's the deal with Dale. He's paying a fucking moron named Cornelius. That's number one, when you're paying someone, they're gonna lie to you because they want to keep you as a client. So Dale's paying Cornelius. And Cornelius is like, oh Dale, you're looking great, you're a heavyweight. Dale, I, I, I think you should come in on stage about 220. You're huge. You look great, Dale. And then Dale gets third. Well, most people would fire Cornelius. Cornelius is a fucking loser. I mean, Cornel Cornelius made a video a few weeks back talking about how he grew up on a dirt floor, had no fucking electricity, no running water. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not paying a coach money that grew up on a dirt floor. You're a fucking loser. So, you know, no running water, no electricity. I mean, get the fuck out of here. You're a fucking loser. So, so, Dale, is, Dale has got this guy piping in his ear that he's a heavyweight. So Dale can't ever get first. And that's not Dale's problem. Dale's problem is he won't fire his coach. Cornelius is the problem. You know, if, if, if Dale would listen to me and diet down to 198 and go light heavy, he would get fucking first. Because Dale can't get on stage against taller men. Because Dale is inferior. Sorry, it's just the truth. You know? I'm 
man, I love Dale. Dale's a good guy. I, I, I would. F you guys think I don't like Dale? I would fight for Dale. I, I if Dale was in trouble, I, I'd be one of the first people there. I, I, I like Dale. I, I mean, I like Dale a lot, but Dale is a fucking clown, and um, he 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 needs to fucking just be honest, you know? Fuck. Honesty, Dale. You're not a heavyweight. You're a, for Christ's sakes. The judges didn't like Dale. Yeah, mother. Hey, whatever. I love Dale. That's my little buddy. And that that's the the funny thing about short bodybuilders is is, is you can go out. You know, have a good time, and and you can be fat and overweight. Doesn't matter, and 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 you can introduce people and say, "This is my friend Dale. He, he's he wants to be a pro bodybuilder," and and people will fucking laugh. Sorry, I I mean. Just because Lenny and Kalua, just because you keep saying it doesn't mean it's true. He doesn't like you, bro. Okay. Lenny and Kalua, bro. Where's your real account? Lenny and Kalura are gay. Just said Jay is the best misfit. What the fuck, bro? I thought you hated me. Fuck, what's wrong with you, son? Have you ever had gay thoughts? I I have to admit, um, I've had some really bad thoughts ab about overpowering, you know, some of my enemies that are submissive males and, and shoving my cock in their ass. I mean, Take take Brad Wolf for an example. That's not his real name. What's Brad's last name? What's Postal Boy's name? Brad Murray. Yeah, Brad Murray. Yeah. 
I wouldn't trust him to put my cock in his mouth. He might bite it. But you don't you don't think I'd like to beat the fuck out of Brad Murray and butt fuck him? I don't even need to come. I I probably couldn't get hard, but you just dominate Brad and beat him a little bit till he submits. That'd be satisfaction enough. John Claude Van Dam said, Jay, you need help. Oh, no, no. Of course I need help. Lenny and Kalora. Just changed his tune. Jay is the hero he deserved. What the fuck, dude? You're a turncoat. Now you're now you're my biggest fan. What the fuck's wrong with you, son? Pomp's postal boy, Jay is father we have. That's right. I feel bad about doing this on a Saturday because the Cuban can't be here. Yeah. You know, when 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 you compare and contrast me and the Cuban, you you really have the best of both worlds. Here I am, the ultimate bachelor in a hotel, drunk as fuck. Worried about his next cigarette. That's that's my biggest biggest fear in my world is my biggest cigarette. And, and then and then you got my friend the Cuban, who, who's it's Saturday. He's with his family. He's he's with at least two of his daughters. You know, he, he's got family. I mean, you guys might think, well, why would someone like the Cuban want to be friends with Jay? I have, I'm going to ask you guys a question. There's 131 of you, 130 watching. Have you ever heard Cuban Talk about fucking my mom. 132 now. Has anybody got any clips or, or anything about, about the conservative Cuban wanting to fuck my mom? And you, and you wonder why I went after Brad so bad. <laughs> In secret, yes, Father. Well, that's fine. No, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm so good with that. If, if Cuban wants to fuck my mom in private and he never talks about it, I'm actually good with that. But Brad was a fucking cocksucker and, and was so cocky, thinking no one would punch him in the face, that he could just talk about it. I don't think Brad's ever had his ass kicked. I I don't. I mean, I've had my ass kicked several times. Fuck. Not in high school, but in junior high, I got my ass kicked a couple times. Real good, too. But I don't think Brad ever got the shit beat out of him. 
Because the way Brad runs his mouth, no one's ever taught Brad a lesson. Oh, Brad is a punk. Jay doesn't have the genes to fight. Hey, you might be right. I'm a more of a breeder. I mean, look how handsome I am. I'm a gorgeous male. Now, Brad is a punk, an absolute punk. Thor won. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I don't, I don't like those tall guys. Guy, guys with reach like that, they're scary. Because being shorter and more muscle doesn't mean more punching power. Sometimes the taller man is more dominant. Yeah, Cuban's a good guy. And I love the Cuban. You, you guys imagine that... Could you guys ever imagine... Let's, let's go through the list of the misfits. How many of them you could imagine <clears throat> talking about fucking my mom? Could you imagine Prince Andrew talking about fucking my mom? No, I don't. Could you imagine Lenny talking about fucking my mom? No, I can't. Could you imagine... Who are the other OGs? Jason would. No, Jason would not. I... I don't even think Rob Zilla would ever talk about fucking my mom. Brad is the only piece of shit from the OG Misfits that would talk about th fucking my mom. And I put up with it. I laughed about it. Ha, 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 ha. Hardy, har, har, har. I put up with it for a while. And I finally got sick of it. And then I, I remember when um, the, this is when the this is when it started. He he was at fucking he was in Orlando with the Taco Queen, and, and I made a comment that oh Brad Brad's in Orlando with the Taco Queen and her kid but he can't go on vacation with his own biological kids. That's the start of it. And, 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 and Brad went, Brad didn't like that. Brad tried to be a tough guy. I don't remember what Brad said next, but that, that's, that's when I had to leak the secret that he had a retarded child. Yeah. Elon D. Jesus. Okay, so all your fault. No, not necessarily. Brand should have kept his mouth shut. Jay opened his fat mouth. Yeah, well, do something about it. But. Brad knew what he was doing. You can only talk about fucking someone's mother so long before they are eventually going to lose their cool. And if they have any information on you, they're going to leak it. Look, let's just say Brad didn't have a retarded child, which he does. But let's just say he didn't. 
Brad could have kept on talking about wanting to fuck my mom forever. And I would have had nothing. Nothing. I could have just let him do it and just looked like a fucking cuckold for the rest of my life. But uh, Brad had, Brad has a secret. Brad has a retarded child. You want to talk about fucking my mother? I'm going to talk about your retarded child. Boom. Shaburnger. Oh, Valerie's a fucking tramp. You can replace Valerie in fucking 15 minutes. Shaburnger. Brad needs to give up and realize father won. Look. He's not fucking my mom, but he's still got a retarded child. Victory, father. Those of you guys that are recording this, want me to do that again? Brad's never going to fuck my mom, but Brad's always going to have a retarded daughter. Victory, father. What's up, Pomp Postal Boy? There you go. There's a middle finger. Yeah, I, dude, you cannot win against, against someone like me. Brad thought he was going to be a tough guy. Oh, yeah, oh, I've got a beard and tattoos. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd fuck your mom. Yeah, I put up with that from that punk for a while. After a while, he wouldn't shut up. Everyone needed to learn about his retarded child. <laughs> Pierce Bronson, loser. Shit, I ain't no loser. I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the bar in a few minutes as a as a bachelor with no baggage. I might be fat and and, and horribly looking, but Brad Brad's got a single mom living in his house, and he's he's got women. Two women that have kids from him. Uh, prove that his daughter is that way. Oh, you haven't seen... You haven't seen the pictures. Someone raided... His ex-girlfriend's fucking Facebook page. I mean, she's a genuine retard. I mean, she's a genuine retard. Jay will die alone. Don't most cowboys? Come on, man. What the fuck? Is the goal in your life to have a bunch of people at your funeral? That makes you a fucking pussy. If, if your goal in life is to have as many people as possible at your funeral, you're a fucking pussy. What the fuck? That's something Hamburg would want. Fucking pussy. Uh, he died alone. That's right. Because he didn't take anybody's fucking shit.
Hamburg's son probably doesn't even know what gender he is. Hamburg's son um, probably goes to the bar and this, like has fat lesbian chicks with dyed hair. Like, are you sure you're a man? He's like, well, no, I'm not really sure what I am. I'm very confused. A Megatron flip flop. And uh, we're at three hours and 32 minutes, and I haven't said the N word. Father is Clint Eastwood in Pale Rider. Oh. Actually, um, I love Clint. Um, the Unforgiven. Um, when um, when when Clint is near death, and that that scar faced um. Hooker it, um, gets him back to health, and finally, w once once Clint is is back to being healthy, and um, um, she offers him a free one, and 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 Clint Clint says, "Well, I can't." And, and she says, well, I admire that because you still respect your wife. And um, he says, if I was going to get a free one, I'd want to be it with you. That, that, that's probably... One of the most realistic um, Western scenes I've ever seen. Because that's, I think, the way men behave. No, I'm not Clint Eastwood. I'm not even close. But just talking about that scene made me cry. Dude, The Unforgiven is a crazy, crazy Western. That whole scene when it, she offers him a free one and he declines and, and, and brings up his wife, says, but if I was going to do a free one, I'd wanna, I wanted to be with you. Man. Anybody that's ever been in love with a whore can relate to that scene. Wiz says, let her cry. Yeah, that's my favorite Hootie and the Blowfish song. 
Fucking asshole. Fuck you. So you don't like me because you like... Let's get Father a lot lizard. I don't think there's any lot lizards here. Shaburnger. Brad doesn't cry. That's because Brad has been financially desecrated by women because of his penis. Uh, oh, Jesus. I think Gorilla Juice is starting to text me. Yeah, I mean, the unforgiven, it, it is, I mean, quintessentially the best Western movie ever fucking made. Period. I mean, I mean, The Unforgiven is, is, is The Unforgiven is 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 the Holy Grail. And I I would put um oh <laughs> I'm going to have to end this. I don't think that's Gorilla Juice. Yeah, um, my second favorite Western is Tombstone. Jesus Christ, he, he sends me a text message that says, Debbie fucks niggers. How am I supposed to take that for real? Come up with something original. I mean, get creative. No. Oh, he just texted me, Debbie sucks nigger dick. Oh, real good guy. I love reading comments with the N-word in it, because then I'm not responsible for them. Oh. <laughs> Debbie killed your dad. Wow. This guy's amazing. Uh. Uh, he did... Debbie loves nigger gangbangs. My mom? No way. I never knew. 
who is this guy? Is he in eighth grade? Hmm. Palm Souls Boy, father of pool time, right? Yeah, I'm ready for the pool. You, you know what's awesome? You know, you, you guys understand what's awesome about what he's doing is every time I read a comment with the with the N word in it, every other now, every other time from older videos where I use the N-word, I can just say I was reading comments. I mean, I'm gonna use this against him. Now, now we can go back and say, well, I was just reading comments. I, I wasn't, that wasn't me. I was reading comments. I had some guy from Wales texting me saying that. That's why I said the N word. <laughs> it's Robzilla texting you. I doubt it. I I can I can just see my my next job interview I'll be like well you said the n word on on your uh, YouTube tell us about that I'll be like well that was um some someone made a comment and I was just reading their comment. Gives me a way out. Uh, tell us the number. Oh, it's a 561 number. It won't do anything. Eh, if, if I block it, it'll just get a new one. I was just reading comments. Fucking awesome. He just gave me use in the world. I was just reading comments. Oh, I'm not a lot of beer. Of course you love me. Take us to get more beer, Father. Uh. Oh. Very tired. I know. Oh. 
I know. Every time that person texts me with the N word. Do you guys understand? Brad said you're a loser with a micro penis. What if? Would even text that like a a girl? Who uses the term micro penis? Take us on your walk, Father. Gotta smoke. Take us on your walk. Walk your children. Smoke. There's no smokes around here. Actually, there is a fucking gas station. Oh, I could, this could be minty. Oh, let me think about this for a second. Let me put a shirt and some shoes on. There is a gas station on the other side of the rest. Oh, 561-593-2638 just said Debbie smokes nigger dick. Right. Good for you, bro. What's up, Brad? What's up, Brad? Man, I feel so bad for Brad. Uh, Tom's postal boy. All right, hold on. Father thinking. Dale. Okay, I made up my mind. <sighs> there, there's a gas station that has smokes. Two doors down. I could go get some smoky chokies, then take you guys to the pool.
Father. Why are there people on the internet that don't like me? All right, so we're going to take a vote. Those of you that want me to walk to the store with the camera on and buy cigarettes and more beer and then go to the hotel pool, It seems like an overwhelmingly yes. Oh, Gorilla Juice says die. All right. You know, I'm doing pretty good. If as controversial as I am, one person in the world wants to ruin my life. I'm doing pretty good. I'm gone. Smoky, smoky, choky, choky. Father. Pumps, postal boy. And a Sure does look nicer than Brad's house. Mm. All right, going getting in the elevator. Might lose you guys for a second. Stick with father. What's up with you? I need a drink and a cigarette. There you go. I don't have either. <laughs> All right. I do have a drink, but it's fine. <laughs> right. I don't have a cigarette, though. Sorry. I'm going to fight. I, <laughs> just to close. The, no, oh, I got, I got okay. <laughs> I'm walking to the gas station. Oh, no, they got okay. cigarettes up there. I know. All right, here you go. I, I got my phone turned in this direction because I don't want to film you without your permission. <laughs> cool. What do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I know. Go figure. What kind of day is it? You married this guy? Of course. 30 years. 30 years ago. Oh, no, I love you guys. I'm going to the gas station to get smokes. Maybe go. at the pool on the roof. All right. You know, I'll you know. He's from cigars. Oh. I want a cigar. One. You don't have to buy yourself one. I'll be at the pool. <laughs> smokes. All right. <laughs> Fuck. That was outstanding. Did you guys witness that? That was outstanding. Dude, that, I can't stop laughing. Oh my God. That lady was so fucking horny. Oh. Father.
Who keeps saying Shaburnger? There's the Ruby Tuesdays. Oh. I wish I was sober. I'd love to cream pie that old bitch. She was pretty sexy for being a 70-year-old wrinkled up prone. The Baker acting ink. Yeah. Try it, motherfucker. You know what's funny about everybody going after Big J? I've been on this planet 53 years. And everybody's trying to bring me down. But no one's been able to do it. That's what's awesome. So, come on, man. All right. I'm running out of breath. Fucking walking. Is this entertaining for you guys? Oh, fuck. I I can't I can't read the comments while I'm walking, uh, but I'm I'm about 200 yards um, from the store. I'm right behind Outback Steakhouse right now. I'm getting loud in the city. Oh, Big Rob. I don't want to make fun of people. Um, but I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you guys what. And I'm not trying to make fun of people. I'm, be I'm being sincere as fuck. Big J touches people's lives. Um, last night... After that live stream um, with Dale and Big Rob and Joe, Dude, I don't want to brag, um, but all three of those men thanked me. You know, and, and I know I sound like a douchebag bringing that up, but dude. That's the, I touch people's lives. People like me. So when, when, when people are out to get me and they don't like me, well, you got an army against you. All right, we're at the circle, okay. Dude, I hope that granny doesn't want me to bang her. I don't think I could get hard. Ugh. Drunk as fuck.
What up? You got Chesterfields? Chesterfield. Yeah, Chesterfield. Alright, Newport, sure. I need a lighter too. Lighters are right there on the end there. All right, my man. Want yeah. Bag? Want a bag there? Yeah. I don't want the police to see I got two 11s. Good night. All right, thank you, my man. Oh, I'm fucking trash. <laughs> Father. Hundred and eighty viewers, what the fuck? How do I s Joey Joey got a new port? Can't believe I bought a lighter. I'm getting loud at the gas station. <laughs> Big Rob said he was going to do another loud in the city dedicated to me. If you guys watched, um, Joe Piataro's live stream yesterday on Muscle Sports Mag. Dude, Loud in the City it is probably um, one of my favorite mints because it's just so fucking awesome. And Rob yesterday promised he would do another live in the city. Um, Dedicated to me. Hey. Kidnap a PM, Father. Why would I want a PM? I wouldn't want that smell in my hotel room. <laughs> I could score some crack.
actually where I'm at in central Florida, there's way more meth heads here. Oh. I could score a chicken head. I could probably score a $40 blowjob at this gas station. You know, the problem with $40 blowjobs is you got to look at that fucking chicken head while you're coming in their mouth. Hundred and seventy seven people are watching this. Jesus Christ. You people don't have any fucking lives. Oh. Yeah, it is pool time. I'm headed straight to the pool. I tried swinging with that couple I met. Who knows? He might offer me his wife at the pool when I get back there. See, that's the thing about swinging. It, 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 you never know. You just always got to seem available. He, he, might, he might approach me at the pool and say, look, <laughs> my wife thinks you're hot. Um, look, my dick doesn't work. Um, would you mind fucking my wife? And, and you know, and w when someone approaches you like that, you got to be kind. A kinder and gentler father. <laughs> K City just said he's not going to tell you that. No, it happens, dude. I'm having a smoke outside this bar, this gas station, and I, I, I'm not going to open a beer because that would that would give the police a reason to s stop me. Father is wise. Damn, is that a Kia? That's a pretty sharp ride for a Kia. Holy shit. I didn't know Kia made something that sweet. Is that a Kia? Is that a Kia? That is a sharp car for a Kia. I can't believe that they're making nice cars these days. What's up, man? How are you? You guys play basketball or what? Football? Okay. The fuck? Outside Lowe's. What's up, man? What's up? Putting air in your tire? Yeah. 
I'm good, man. Outstanding. Look. Look how those two guys are dressed. That PM looks like he's in his pajamas. Well, there's the Leesburg police. Yeah, I'm going back to the hotel. Having, I just came to the store to get some cigarettes and some beers. I got a room at the Hampton. Just filming my, my journey. Yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you. Dude, that was outstanding. You guys see that? Father encountered the police. Oh, that was a meant for the ages. He told me to have a good Saturday night. White guy. Well, of course. That, that made my day. I'm behind the Outback Steakhouse right now. Oh, fuck. Oh. Dude, that was outstanding. Police officer asked me if I was okay. What was I supposed to tell him the truth? No, bro, I'm not okay. I'm a fuck. Look, there's my truck. Mm. Oh. That was outstanding. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Father. He looked like he was about 22, police officer. That's so cute. I love young cops. They're so cute. You know? Protect and serve. Son, I appreciate you. I know. Oh, look. Look at that PM and the lime green. Can you guys see her? Oh, yeah. Whoa, she's shaking her shit. This is too much. All right, we're almost at the pool. Are you guys still entertained by this? 
189 people watching this. You guys are stupid. Uh. Father. All right. Oh, fuck. There's PMs at the pool. I'm going to have to go silent if I keep filming. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap, you guys are here. Got your beer. I know. Ah, so tired. Oh, you guys want one? Oh, no, thank you. Okay. How are you feeling? What are you here for? I'm on vacation. Yeah. What made you come to this area? Um, it's too cold in Michigan. Where are you guys from? Uh, Florida. Originally Long Island, New York. Long Island. Long Island. Yeah. Uh, that was eleven years ago. We've been here for eleven years. Yeah. My, my, nice. my girlfriend's from Queens. Oh. Yeah, we, we took over. Her and I get in fights all the time. What? That's cold? No, because she's a Queens girl. And she likes Yankees and Giants. <laughs> and Jets. I'm I'm like sweetheart. I'm not even from there. But if I was from Queens, I know the history. You've got to be Mets and Jets if you're from Queens. Not Giants. But sometimes, you know, maybe your dad was a Giant fan or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's her excuse. Um. Yeah. But still. Yeah, with uh, hockey, it's uh, raining. Yeah. Raining. Raining. It's all, it's all bad. But yeah, my friends are all Mets and Jets fans. Yeah. You know, um, they hate the Yankees. You guys are, people don't do this nowadays, but remember when people used to have a baby book? Yeah. Um, my mom had a baby book. And, um, it, it, one of the questions in the baby book was, who were the sports legends of the day? Oh, okay. And I, I was born in 69. Okay. And, and in my mom's writing, Denny McClain, because the Tigers won the World Series in 68, right. yes. okay. and Joe Namath. Oh. So I've always been Jets. Oh, so funny. Joe Namath, uh, he just uh, the restaurant down in Jupiter, and we went down there to eat. And he, and he sucked up to him. He met him. I got my, I got my picture taken. Yeah, picture taken with him. And he was like, and actually, he told him. He said, "Joe," because he had long sleeves on. He goes, "You have to dress better." <laughs> oh, but he's dressed like a slug. He in the yard. Yeah, something. and he's like, he owns, he's half owner of this restaurant. And so we're there, and I'm like, like Joe. Maybe you come over and catch you before you go out. <laughs> oh, I love Joe Nana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. so yeah. I'm a Detroiter. Oh, okay. Through Lions. and through. Lions fan? Yeah. yeah. Look, don't make fun of me. I'm not. Oh. I'm not. I, I, I am so Mets and Jets. Uh -huh. That's so funny. Oh, that's funny.
Yeah, I, I mean, luckily, my girlfriend is 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 Giants and Yankees. Giants. Oh, I can't deal with that. I'm a Mets fan. I used to take my son to games all the time. We when, were in Shea Stadium. With Strawberry all the time. and oh. when we're we're playing. Many and, years uh, back. Yes. Oh, that was I love them. I love. That's like Barbara 68. was a Mets fan. Eight, uh, well, that was 68, but then uh, um, when they won the World Series, the last time they won the World Series, that was like phenomenal. Oh, my God. I was you, like, you I guys know. remember um, a famous Met named Rusty Staub? Oh, yeah. Uh, my buddy was friends with him. He had a restaurant in Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. My buddy used to go there all the time. It was called Rusty's, right? Yep. Yep. Now, he went to the Expos, then he became a Tiger. Okay. And when Rusty Staub was with the Tigers, that was back in the Mark Fidrich days. You remember that Maryland guy, the wacko that used to talk to the ball and play with the dirt on the mound? I remember him. Yep. Yep. My mom actually dated Rusty Stop. Oh, really? Yeah, Rusty Stop came to our house. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I got into the locker room at Tiger Stadium. Did you really? Yes. I'm so, how old were you then? Oh, I must have been nine or ten. Okay, but you remember it? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, nice. The the carpet was 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 Tiger Stripe. Oh, oh really? I, oh. Oh, cool. I've never seen anything like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, Orange yeah, and yeah. black tiger stripe carpet. Right, right, right. Nice. <laughs> you gotta excuse my French, but all these all these ball players are walking around with their dongs hanging out. Right. <laughs> my mom wasn't allowed in. Oh yeah. Those are the old days oh, yeah. when women couldn't get into the locker room. And these guys are just walking around naked as a jaybird. Why not? That's where they lived, actually. And I'm, I'm, get, I'm get, getting my program signed by all the Tigers. You still have it or no? Oh, I lost it. You lost it. No it happens way. over the years. I did something really stupid, too. Oh, no. What'd you do? Well, I, I cut out the pages. Oh, I ruined the fucking thing. Oh, no. Oh. Well, you were a kid. You didn't know any better. You just thought it'd be great to cut out the pages, maybe put them up on the wall or whatever. Well, yeah, you know, when I was a kid, I was a tomboy. And I used to have cards, baseball cards, Roger Maris and and oh, yeah, Reggie Big Jackson. Channel. You have Joe Pepitone? No, I don't remember that. Trash. But I'm just thinking about all those cards that I had. Yeah. Like, these freaking things are worth a fortune. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Now, if you still had them. Sure. Wasn't Tom Seaver a Met? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I I remember as a kid, I had almost every single Tom Seaver card. I love that guy. I don't know why. I, I, I was a Tom Seaver. He was the king of the Mets. Number one Met. At that time. At that time. That yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, that's pretty amazing. So that was a good memory for you going to the locker room. Oh, that's awesome. Seeing the uh, seeing the bird pitch. My buddy, my oh yeah, the bird. Yeah, my uh, my buddy was uh, his girlfriend knew all the Mets, and so they used to go hang out at Rusty's. And then uh, all of the ball players went there. Whether you were a Met or a Yankee, you went there to drink and hang out with all the other ball players, and. Uh, I think he gave Joe Pepitone a ride home one night or something, right? I don't know if he asked him for money or a cab fare or something. It was like it was like the craziest thing in the world. Is this guy who was a big name ball player and was asking him for money or something? Some crazy story he told me. I forget what it was. Yeah. But yeah, my buddy used to hang out there all the time. He used to get front row. His girlfriend, it would, you know, the players get tickets. To the games, and then she could get into the same thing. They could go back in the pool and they would call her up and say, Hey, you got front row, you want them, or whatever. So they call the games. The front row. When, when I used to go to Tiger games, 
all the players' wives sit, sat behind home. So, so we we got tickets behind home plate. Now, my grandfather he had box seats on third base. Oh, really? Box seats, right? Right. The best seats you could have. Incredible, right? Yeah, it's like right next to mine. That's unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, I grew up a Tigers fanatic. But I, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Mets. I like Rusty Staub. I'm an older Mets fan, so. Yeah, like I Gary said, Strawberry and Good and Mendez, Wilson, those guys. That's that was, when you were a fan. That was like, yeah, yeah. I loved them. I loved them. Those were, they, were, they were a good team then. Yeah. Now, the Mets built a stadium across the street from, from the old stadium, right? Right. Yeah, they yeah. built the uh, city field across the street from Shea. Right. So, we went and saw... Uh, Paul McCartney. We went and saw Paul McCartney open city field. I love Paul McCartney. Right. So, you too. And matter of, yeah. My girlfriend's name is Linda. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Aww. So sad. I always, I always, I don't want to cry. No, uh, we saw her. Right. We saw her with him. Yes, I, yeah. When I get too drunk. Oh, we all do. <laughs> I, I, I send my girlfriend um, the, the video of Baby I'm, Baby I'm Amazed. Yeah. That was with Right. Uh, yeah, I love Paul McCartney. Oh, we yeah. do too. We saw him. We seen we him saw quite him. a bit. Yeah. We've seen him several times. Oh, we did see him with Linda. Yeah. Yeah, we saw him at uh, a giant stadium. Yeah. With, uh, Wings Greatest Hits is a good CD. Oh, Everything yeah. Everything is yes. great about it. Everything. Yes. Um, so, what's your next adventure? So you're here on vacation. What's your next? Yeah, I'm headed. I'm headed to um, Pennsylvania in the morning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a big switch. Yeah. Well, I'm a truck driver. Oh, okay. so is that okay. your dad? Is that your truck right there? Don't talk about it though, because I'm filming right now. Oh, okay. I got the camera on me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, so you. Yes, like that's my truck. <laughs> but don't talk about it. All right. Um. Yeah. Um. My company, we we deliver fresh Florida orange juice up north. Good. So where in Pennsylvania headed to? I think Pottsville, Pottstown, one of the two. Our friends had a cabin up in the North Poconos, so northern. I love it up there. Beautiful up there. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, like. Lake, oh, what's the name of the lake? Walla Pocock. Lake yeah, well, you got a bug on your flat top. Do I? Just, oh, yeah. I thought it was uh, a. Walla Pocock. That lake was by one of the ski resorts. Uh, yeah, they had a ski place next to their house. They had a cute little cabin there with a wood burning stove. He would bake the fire so hot. He'd be hanging out in our shorts and t shirts in the winter. Oh, yeah, it was great. fun. It was a nice place. Nice. Good truck. <laughs> I I grew up deer hunting in Michigan, but after that movie, The Deer Hunter, with Robert De Niro, I always wanted want a deer hunt in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Right. I'm I'm like I can't I couldn't deer, but I don't have any kids. It does. Yeah, if you eat it. That's that's my thing. Yes. I, 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 I don't know if I ever had Dennis. I don't remember. Well, they I've say it, it's, it's not as yummy as beef. All right. No, but they say if get yeah, if it's that that old, it's um, it's good. It's better than it's. Other what do you mean if it's not old? No, but that's the thing. Because it's uh, it's gamey. Oh, I I disagree with you. Oh, yeah. it's not gamey. Oh. You have it fresh. You shot it. You they say it. if it's fresh, it it's fresh. Not I hung one one time in my garage. Yeah. For weeks, because because oh, yeah. I had too many in my freezer already. Oh, wow. 
and it was starting to become gamey. Yeah. It was so delicious. Oh. What it was heavy. Really? Yeah, it was aged. Oh, okay. Like dry aged beef. Okay. You go to Whole Foods or Fresh Market, they yeah. charge big time money for dry aged. Oh. That's good. Venison is all about how you prepare it. It's not the best. I'm, I'm, obviously, I prefer beef. Right. And and buffalo's better. Buffalo's really better. Oh, yeah. Better for you than beef. Oh, yeah. Leaner. Yeah. And better fats. Right. Elk is good. That taste. That taste of the bison. Bison. I, I like bison. Yeah. Carol and Rob go somewhere. Rob gets the What's bison burger or whatever. A restaurant, the restaurant they go to. It's gamey. Yeah. You know, I mean, people think gamey is a bad word. Yeah. It's like, do you guys know that comedian Jim Gaffigan? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. He's fucking hysterical. I love it. I, I just watched a video. He was talking about when people say it's fishy. No one says, well, it's too hamburgery. I know. If you want fish, it's fish. Exactly. exactly. No one ever gets a hamburger and says it's too hamburgery. Yeah, I love Jim Gavkin. Did you ever see that bit he did on Hot Pockets? No. Oh. Hysterical. Hot Pockets. Oh. oh. He goes. He goes through all the different kinds of hot pockets. Right, right. Yeah. Oh. This is terrible. But yeah, during COVID, I think he lived in Manhattan, didn't he, or whatever? And he, Not sure. He used to uh, be on TV and he used to talk about being trapped in the apartment with his kids and not being able to go out and what life was like, trapped at home with your kids, trying to get them to do schoolwork on Zoom and everything. He's a very funny guy. Don't you drive a two trail or something down here or no? It came down, now you're picking up a load and going there? Huh. Um, yeah. My I dropped my empty trailer at, at my company. Oh, okay. That's why I was able to bobtail over here. Okay. Yeah, I work local to here. Oh, okay. Cool. Good. But yeah, I gotta go tomorrow and pick up an empty trailer uh-huh. from our yard. Pennsylvania. No, no, I got to go take my empty trailer to Coca-Cola, oh. give them an empty, and I'm picking up a loaded trailer of juice right. to go to Coca-Cola. Right. Yeah, we have uh, like uh, one exit up, two exits up from our exit on 95, where we live, is uh, the Tropicana, oh, Tropicana plant. Tropicana, yeah. yeah. Plant there. Huge plant. Was I think it, I've been there. Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was thinking... New York. No, no, oh, Florida. No. Oh, yeah. Now, we've been, we've been li- we're from New York, but we've been living here 11 and a half years. Are you, you're from Fort Pierce? Well, no. Uh, well, we Fort, live in Fort St. Lucie, with spring training of the Nets. And the yeah. games are going on. Well, like starting six miles this week. from there. They started the first yeah, game. Yeah, we're today. closer to the Tigers. They're in Lakeland. Oh, uh, okay. okay, cool. Yeah, so we have the Grapefruit League, they call it. It's uh, Nets, the Nationals. Cardinals, the Astros, and uh, Marlins. Those, I think, those five teams. The Tigers don't play, come over. Not for uh, once in a while, either the Tigers come or the Yankees come to visit. Or where uh, the Yankees at? Over in Tampa. Yeah, yeah. But well, you know what? The Yankees come. We went. There was like four Yankees that I knew. Yeah. The rest of them are older the guys trying to make the team. Yeah. Because they, they don't want to travel. The, the real team. The, I, I was so happy they ended the labor strike because oh yeah. Oh, yeah. my company, we, we, we are so um, tied in to the juice, oh, yeah. Florida orange juice. So if the Lakeland economy tanks, that hurts my company. Oh, and, and, and the Tigers, they bring millions of dollars in tourism to Lakeland. Right. Oh, sure. yeah. Sure. Same with the Mets and all the other teams. Yep. Orioles are down there, aren't they? Now, now it's all uh, it's all National League. 
Orioles are in um all National League teams. Orioles are south of you. Oh, which is I where? Don't that, I don't know if there's anybody south of where we are because we're in the we're between all the teams are between Jupiter. West. There's a couple. Right, they're in Jupiter. So the Cardinals are in Jupiter. Yeah, Cardinals. So are the Orioles. I don't think uh, so. No, the the Cardinals, the Cardinals, and then the Nationals, and I think the Astros share a state. Yeah, the, and I think the Marlins maybe they. Share Baltimore's the down there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'd, I'd have to look it up. There's a real good crab bar down there. Okay, that's where Joe Namath opened his restaurant at Jupiter. On the yeah. water there. It's a really nice restaurant. Really, and good. he always goes there all the time. Dude, my my girlfriend's daughter. My girlfriend. I said girlfriend's daughter. My girlfriend. Her father was a character. Um, I wish I would have met him. He's deceased. Such the the stories about this guy are amazing because he he's a New Yorker, obviously from Queens. Right. Retired to Jupiter. Okay. And. He, he 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 was a New York City cop. Okay. And um he was a bodybuilder once he got old. Okay. And so he he had to meet people in Jupiter. Uh-huh. You know. So he took it upon himself to run into Joe Namath. Oh, okay. Run into Burt Reynolds. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Burt Reynolds. Oh. Uh, I love Bird Reynolds. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, and we didn't even know um, what worked an event a year ago or two years a year ago. Well, actually, it was a year ago. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond lives down there. Know, but the, the people next to us were like, did you see Neil Diamond? He lives like, in Jupiter. No, Neil Diamond. They were like, he was here. He's old. He's got a care, caregiver. Caregiver. Person that takes care of him. It's sad. He lives down there. He lives in where we know who Neil, Neil, Neil Diamond is, right? I love Neil Diamond. Yeah, he was there. Sad, didn't even very know he sad. Was there. We didn't see him. Like, but he was Neil singing Diamond. along with the concert that was going on. Just sad. You, al- you almost hope your your ticker gives out be- before you get dementia. Oh, man. I know. That's Without the- a doubt. Well, I'll tell you what. That's the number one thing. People are more scared of that than cancer. My friend, her, people well, are she's more up- afraid of. Right. My, my friend, uh, she's in Alzheimer's. Texas right now because her mother has dementia and they're all waiting for her to die. Yeah. She's not eating. She, she can hear, but she can't talk, you know, and it's just. It, it's the end, you know. It's serious, sad, very sad. Yeah, one of my biggest fears is winding up in some Obamacare nursing home. Oh, oh yeah. my God! Living in your own waste. Yeah, yeah. sitting, sitting, laying in your own waste. There's nobody's gonna help you. Yeah, I'm, I'm an only child, so I got nobody. Uh-huh. I got nobody. So your girlfriend lives with you in Michigan. No, my girlfriend lives in um, Coconut Creek, Florida. Oh, okay. So what is she doing now? I'm sorry. What's what, it, what is she doing now? Oh, oh, she's a salesperson. Oh, no, okay. So you're not, actually, you're leaving for Pennsylvania, so, right? Yeah. Do you run loads back and forth? Yeah, up and down, up and right. down, up and down. I wear out 95. Oh okay. So, name, name and exit at 190, on, so, on 95, so I know it. Do you live with her? or? Oh, that's funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to figure out. So where do you go when you leave here, going to Pennsylvania? And but do that? you I, have a home base? Not really. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> um, I, I have quite a following. On YouTube and Instagram. Okay. In, in in fact, they're watching me right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't film you guys because I didn't ask your permission. Okay. But okay. um, yeah, my fans, they they call me the homeless trucker. Okay. <laughs> because I don't technically Have live anywhere. Right. Okay. I I don't own a home. I don't rent a home. Right. And it, it's funny, like. Half of them will call me the homeless trucker, and then the other half that really don't like me, 
will say he lives with his mom. Oh. Which isn't true either. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. So are you happy your boy Stafford won the Super Bowl? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Good for Matt Stafford. Yeah. You, you know, one of the best things about that is, is that puts the blame on Detroit. Right. Right. L.A. can win a Super Bowl right. with Matt Stafford. Right. What's wrong with Detroit? Right. It's the ownership. It's 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 the it's the company. Right. So our our friend, our son and his family live in California. He, and one of his neighbors is supposedly he's part owner of the Rams. I don't, I guess he's Probably talking, a silent I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's fucking a minority. If you look up the Rams, there's this guy, who's the main owner of the Rams, but he's part owner of the Rams. So he was there at the Super Bowl, you know, because he was, because I asked my son, did he have the skybox? He said, no, the NFL controls the skybox, even though it was at their field, you know, their, he was there, Their but people, he was like the owner doesn't get to sit in his own skybox. The NFL gets the skybox. Yeah, I figured that. I I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. But even though it's his, because usually if you own a skybox, you get all the rock concerts, whatever. Well, yeah, we yeah, but for the skybox. Super Bowl, yeah. they weren't allowed in their skybox. The NFL controls the skybox. Well, they probably could lease it. So, they, they would have first option. Have money, so I don't know yeah. if the commissioner gets the skybox. You yeah. know what I mean? And his people. Who knows? Because they had seats. The owner so, probably gets the first option to lease from the NFL. That's I what guess. I would think, right? Yeah, I don't really know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't have rights to well, the Super he was Bowl. The main owner, so the actual he wasn't owner, the main owner. I don't know where the main owner was. Actual owner probably. Least that is thing. It's all about money. So whoever, whoever's going to come in to pay the money, that's right. who's going to get the box. But anyway, they I can't stand the that. NFL anymore. It's I'm more of a college way. guy. College football is exciting. Where UNC? UNC is our team. That's where our son got North it. Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah. yeah. My Michigan plays at five o'clock. What time is it? Uh. I think it was a long time ago. after that. Just, yeah. 740. Oh, okay. Actually, I can see my time. It is dark. We're, we're, we're playing Tennessee right now. Oh. oh, that's a big game. Tennessee's looking really Woo-hoo. good. They look really good. The Bulls. Can yeah. I get a score update? Uh, yeah. I'm asking the fans, but. Oh, there you go. The Bulls. Basketball games don't take as long. They're not oh, quite yeah. three hours like a football well, game. Now, you know, basketball starting. Yeah, hopefully Michigan can win and make it to the Sweet 16. Uh. So, Michigan, right? Not Michigan State. Michigan. Michigan and Tennessee played at 515. So you're pure Michigan. Is there any other UNC kind? UNC won today. Did you say UNC beat Auburn today? No. One? Yep. I haven't paid any attention. Yep. UNC beat number one Auburn. Auburn, Auburn is. That's. I got it. Yeah. I never cared for Auburn, so I don't care. I don't have a dog in the fight. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Oh, that's enough cigarettes. What's going on here? Michigan, Tennessee. Michigan 2064 62. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yep. Second half. 321 left to play. Oh, that's cool. That's tight. Because UNC beat Baylor 93 86 today. We'd like that. UNC is number eight in their, uh, you know. How did you guys wind up UNC fans? No, our son got his masters there. Oh. Because we're from all the was... we don't really have any teams or anything. Yeah. I mean, are the biggest team for, our, for in our area is like St. John's. My daughter Lowe went to uh, Florida State. So yeah, most New York City, most New York people Florida don't State. have a college football team. No, no, because no, they don't have anybody. Not. They don't have anybody, and you know what? I went 
growing up on Long Island, most of my friends were all Notre Dame fans because it's Catholic, you know, Catholic uh, school. Uh, or Penn all, State. They all rooted for, yeah, Penn State. If you weren't Catholic, you were Penn State. Right. Penn State. All the Catholic guys all rooted for Notre Dame. Nice day. Wow. It's supposed to be cooler tomorrow. It's a lot of 10 degrees cooler what than time today. Do you leave for? Uh, Early. Got to get up and hit the road. Oh, no. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, the Michigan game's a nail biter. I'm glad I'm not watching. Oh, yeah. 65, oh, that 64. is. Yeah. Two, 241 left. Uh -oh. Tennessee was favored by five and a half. Were they really? They're hot right now. They've won. I don't know. I think they won like oh, they're 11 playing out of the last the 12 games. No, Tennessee is playing Michigan. The Vols. Vols. Yeah, the Vols. Yeah. yeah. The Orange team. Yeah, they're hot. They're on a streak right now. Well, they're ranked number three in there. That's my uh, Dornalist. The whole country is rooting against Michigan because really? Michigan's coach punched that guy. Really? Well, I, I heard the story. I don't really know what happened, but yeah. He didn't actually punch him. He, he face-palmed him. Well, the world is, that's the way the world is right now. I, I guess face-palming someone isn't as bad as <laughs> punching them. Okay. I guess. Right. If you got a closed fist. That's worse. He didn't want to shake the guy's hand, and the guy grabbed him. Okay. And and he he said a swear word. He said, "Don't touch me." Okay. So I I see his point. Okay. Don't touch me. Right. Right. Fine. Right. Don't touch me. Yeah. This is my space. Stay out of it. You have to respect it. When someone touches you. I know. All games are off. He, he, they were going through the handshake line. And oh, is that what it was? Yeah, the Michigan coach didn't like it because the guy called a timeout. He was kicking their ass. Right, right. He called a timeout with like nine seconds to go, and he was kicking their ass. That's dirty. I know people touch me. I'm like, stop right. it. Stop it. Right. You know, you have people that do this. I hate that. She gets up by four. Two minutes to go. Like, <laughs> I'm going to jump in the pool if they win. <laughs> That's crazy. There you go. Wow. Beautiful out tonight. Oh, yeah. my God. I can't believe it's going to be 10 degrees cooler tomorrow. I love it. I can't wait. We, tomorrow. we have a show. Nice we're, we're an outdoor with vendors. So, oh, so you're at the big party. Yeah, it's a yeah. Great big craft fair. And uh, today was very hot, but tomorrow is going to be wonderful. Yeah. Weather wise. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, this is great. So what do you see in girlhood? Not very often. Oh. I guess that's why she's still your girlfriend. Does right. she know you're, she's your girlfriend? <laughs> she might have someone new. <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying. I said she's in what, Coral Springs? Yeah. Where is that from here? Uh, that's like a suburb of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. okay. It's, All right. Yeah. It's uh, west. That's, that's far. You know, they they say truckers eventually lose everything, <laughs> their house, their woman, everything. Remember her name? I just told you it's Linda, same oh. same one as Paul McCartney's wife. Oh, Linda! Yes, yes. Uh, Been at 38, still 68, 64. Maybe I'm amazed. It's maybe I'm amazed. I don't know why. 
I thought he said, Baby, I'm amazed. Right, right. But the name of the song is Maybe I'm Amazed, which tricked me for all these years. Anybody named Linda anymore ever? My best friend, her name was Linda, was, but uh, yeah. My whole family is named after Catholics. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Jason Michael. Okay. <laughs> you know, Michael was an archangel. Right. Oh, of course. You know, my, my 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 evil. my dad was Timothy. My uncles are uh, Daniel and Christopher. Right, oh, right, right. Crap. Oh, Catholic names. Oh, my like son Christ. is Stephen Joseph. Yeah, son Stephen Joseph. Stephen Joseph. Unbelievable. Is that a good cigar? I'm surprised. I belong to the Cigar of the Month Club. So he never smoked ever. Cigarettes never. He loves cigars. Yeah. So uh I belong to the Cigar of the Month Club from um Cigar International in uh, Pennsylvania. They bought it for him. They're in years uh, ago. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So every month for twenty bucks they send me four cigars with the newsletter explaining the cigar. This is a dub cigar, which is a small one, and it's good, really good. I don't usually Whenever I see dub cigars, I always just like they're too small. But this is a good cigar. Last night I had a crappy cigar from the cigar club. It was a Connecticut cigar. It was very light. I like heavy duty cigars. I like I like um cigars from the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Oh yep. yeah. We got them. Yeah. Yep. I Those mean, seem to be the best. Yeah, they have good cigars. That I'm, I'm not a cigar guy, so I like an easy smoking cigar. Right. That's what I had last night. That's too light. Bell at 68 64 with a minute 35 to go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but what can happen in a minute 35 seconds? For now. 68 64? Yeah. They're going to need a three pointer and, and a foul. Yeah. I went to um next door for dinner last night. Yeah, we went tonight. That's right. They got half off bottles of wine. I know oh, it yeah. was good. Yeah, we have a half home run. Half off bill. We each had a six dollar glass of wine. Yeah. It was great. That's great. And we I had a coupon buy a dinner, get a dinner free. Yeah. Home run. Was wonderful. We had a great dinner for fifty bucks. I'm I'm not a big wine drinker, but I'm picky about my Pinot Noir. <laughs> and um, so I got myself a bottle of Mark West. Oh yeah, oh, that's my good. gosh. Thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Oh, that's that funny. at a restaurant. That's a, oh. yeah, that's what um, what's her name drinks? Shell. Yeah, we like Mark West. That's what she told me. If you're gonna drink Pinot Noir, get Mark West. That's my. That's my. Well, wine. if you want a ten dollar bottle of wine, that that's the one to get. Of that's course. Good. Yep. Perfect. I think that's an Oregon wine. I don't know. I never looked into is it? it. Yeah, Oregon. Yeah, yes, it is. That's a lot of Pinot Noir comes from Oregon. Yeah. You know why? Because it's colder there. Is that why? Uh, you really asked. Uh, I don't, yeah, go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> Can you tell me? All right. <laughs> the Burgundy region of France. Okay. Which is where the best Pinot Noir comes from, okay. Burgundy. Right. Okay. It's it, on the 45th parallel. Oh, it's the same? So if you follow the, the 45th parallel, oh, totally. which is halfway between the equator and the United and, and the North Pole. Okay. Because the Pinot Noir grape. Uh -huh. Doesn't like extreme temperatures. Right. Moderation. All right. That's it, interesting. So when you go to Oregon, 
you're still at the 45th parallel. Yeah. And, and if you find a good valley that's surrounded on all sides by mountains, yeah. that even makes the climate more moderate. Right, right, right. Because being surrounded by mountains tempers the climate. So all your good Pinot Noirs come from the 45th parallel. Uh, very good. I like that. You got 26 seconds left. Oh, shit. You're up by six. 72. I, it's almost game over. 72, 66. I might not. If they win, I might not jump in the pool. But. <laughs> Are you all excited? Yeah, it's amazing. If Michigan makes a sweet 16. The, they wanted to fire the coach. Harbaugh as your football coach? Yes. Yeah. We made the playoff. Yeah. We lost to Georgia. You know. Georgia's good. Right. Georgia's always the best. Every year, year after year, they're, they've been doing really well. Bulldogs. A lot of Bulldog fans down by us in Florida. Yeah, my friend is yeah. Georgia Bulldog. You know, um, they changed that rule about players getting paid. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about it. Yeah, well. Something's going on with the players yeah. wanting to get right. paid. It, it, um, like. Col you're talking about college? Yeah. Yeah. Like, nowadays, it's legal for, for players to, you know, do advertisements for a car dealership. Or a clothing manufacturer, right? Or whoever, right. and get paid money, right? Which I think is fair. And Michigan, um, who's they're so old school, they weren't participating in the program. Okay. And Harbaugh threatened to go back to the pros. That's why Harbaugh right. went and interviewed with the Minnesota Vikings. Right. He said, "You know what? If you're not going to play, and and let me." be on an even playing right. field, right. I'm going back to the pros. Right, right, right. It was a bluff. Uh -huh. So Harbaugh went and did an interview with the Vikings. Right. All of a sudden, Michigan decides, you know what, we're, we're going to agree to the NIL, which is, I think is name, image, likeness. Okay. NIL, where, where players can be paid for their name, image, and likeness. Like, like if you buy a jersey with their name on the back, they, the players get a cut of that. And Harbaugh was like, I can't compete against Alabama or Georgia. Right. I can't yeah. get the players. Right. They're not going to want to come. Right. Right. And, and, and it, it didn't, it, it took Harbaugh doing one interview with the Vikings. All of a sudden, Michigan said, you know what? We're going to participate in NIL. Seconds left. You're up 76, 68. Wow. Looking really good. 13 seconds. It's going to be the longest 13 seconds yeah, it's over. in the Final. world. That's it. You want Whoa, There you go. Woo -woo! Michigan wins. Woo -woo! Nice. Go blue. Sweet 16, baby. Play uh, UNC next? I could care less. Sixteen next weekend, you could play really a lot. Care. Yeah. Awesome, nice. Have you stayed here before or no? No, I kind of got. Let's see there. I I I usually stay in Mount Dora. Okay. Oh yeah. But every room in Mount Dora was booked. Right. It's the craft very show. expensive. Right. That's where we are, the craft show. Yeah. Uh, but cheaper over here. This place wasn't cheap. Well, we had friends and family. Yeah. So it was uh, two. It was, it was two still fifty. Two self. fifty for two nights. We're still yeah. So. Yeah, we got it for one twenty-five a night. Wow. But my nephew works for uh, Hilt, so this is a Hilt brand, so he yeah. got me in a friend family discount. Otherwise, um, yeah, I would have to pay for it. I still have to pay for it. Michigan. 
Michigan. I won. There you go. You won. Woo woo! I'm ready to click off my Crocs and go in the pool. There you go. Well, I don't see you moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I do enjoying. everything slow. I'm not enjoying it. I gave blood today, so. Did you really? Oh, good for you. Yeah, that's. Were you drinking the beer? What you do? You had a lot of iron, right? Pump up the iron. My iron was high. I'm sixteen point three. That's good. No, that's high. I know. I probably. I always get high in here. Really? You have a lot of beef? Do you drink a lot of beef? Do you don't well, um, I'm, I'm on doctor prescribed testosterone. Okay. HRT. Okay. Kind of like women, how they do HRT. Yeah. I'm on male TRT. Okay. okay. So I do testosterone. Okay. And testosterone raises your red blood cell count. Okay. So when you're on TRT as a man, you have to give blood. Yeah, it's like an iron belt. When when I turned 40 13 years ago, my my natural testosterone was 179, which is pathetic. Yeah. Be a baby doing crap. You could have your own, that could be your own business. <laughs> the heck? Is it over? Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh like North Carolina is going to play the winner of the uh, UCLA St. Mary's game. Isn't that your son went there? Yeah. yeah. So it was amazing. Kentucky got knocked out in the first round. That was good. Crazy. There you go. So, so uh, Michigan is going to play the winner of Ohio State Villanova. Oh, okay. to Ohio State's number seven. Oh, I hate Ohio State. Right. right, right. Uh, what, what time that game? We 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 beat Ohio State right before the Big Ten tournament. Okay. And the fix is in. Well, we got a bunch of games. <laughs> we got a bunch of games tomorrow. Oh, Gonzaga, Memphis is the last game tonight. Or tomorrow, I guess. Well, it says 9.40. 8.40, Arkansas plays New Mexico State. Oh, these other games are going to be tomorrow. Oh, I see Michigan. Michigan State is going to play Duke tomorrow. That's state. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought only uh, college games play on Saturday. Saturday and Sunday. Uh, well, that's how the tournament is. Right. Uh, Thursday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's the first opening tournament. Uh, yeah. Michigan played Thursday because they, they were a, a, a 11 seed. Yeah. So we had to play again today. So Michigan's already won two games in the tournament. That's a victory for us. Yeah. Your next game is on the, the 24th. Yeah, that's a victory. That's, right. That's so, far as 20. Next so, week. it's probably next Friday yeah. or Saturday. Uh, 21, 22. Well, Thursday again. Yes, next weekend is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. Michigan making the Sweet 16 after all we've been through is a victory. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's your 11 seed. You did really well. I know. I, I, I sent a bunch of my friends um, e emails. Uh -huh. Look out for that little 11 seed from oh, Ann Arbor. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, we're not a little school. Right. 
Oh yeah, it's, it's like actually the biggest college team, of all, uh, the biggest college of all, isn't it? Because they have a bunch of offshoots and everything. So the, I think they have the most graduates. I think Ohio State has more. More graduates. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Living. Uh, oh, all right. I I think Ohio State has more living graduates. I'm ready if you are. I'm ready. All right, bud. You guys going to bed? Yeah. yeah. Got up at five o'clock. Have a show tomorrow. We're done. So we can show for us. So. TV on and pass out. Yeah. Pass out. Two seconds. Eight o'clock. Oh. What do you guys have at your booth? Oh, I just do. I make jewelry. So. Which, that was a nice show because it's all... Yeah. It's supposed to be all homemade stuff. Yeah. So we we did a show last week in Melbourne. It was horrible. It was all garbage, Chinese shit. You know, you could sell anything you want. You got anything I could buy, Linda? Yeah, something I special. I, yeah, I couldn't. It, we don't have it with us. Actually, we have nothing. Everything is because at the they place. have actual police patrol the streets yeah. in Dora. So you you could just leave your. Zip up your tent. I wish I knew before. I put zip Sorry. ties on my tent and stuff. So, you know, they don't have to cut the zip ties. But suppose the lady who ran it said, no, you're stuck safe. We have actual police patrol the streets here at night to keep everybody's stuff safe. But we didn't bring it. would have been back. nice. I know I could get something handmade. Yeah. Yeah, but well, yeah, we don't have any everything. We left everything behind. Lady, actually, we talked to the head lady before, and she just showed it up to safety. You have to take it with you. Well, it was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. Safe trip, okay? Thank you. Thank oh, you. the bugs are coming out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Take care. Hey, Jason. Nice meeting you. It was good talking to you, buddy. All right, safe travels. Go blue. All right. Go blue. I'll root for your team. You want to see first because you get the next. Father. We're going on a five hour live. Oh, my God. Michigan won. <clears throat> We're in the Sweet 16. It is pool time. You guys want to see my body. Now that nobody's here, I can piss my pants. Father. Mm. Father.
father's naked body is in the pool. Oh. Web page 31, 100% peeing in the pool right now. Um, I can't confirm or deny that. Mm. Hold on, my prostate's fighting with me right now. Uh. Yes. No. Who cares if anyone calls my company? What are they going to say? Oh, he's drinking. He's at a hotel. Father, now we're alone. What's that song? Is is that Tiffany? The I think we're alone now. I think we're alone now. Ugh. Father. Ugh. Oh my God, we're over five hours. Oh, Father. <laughs> oh, this is so good for my skin. This is a um, saltwater pool, believe it or not. Father. Holy shit, they're drag racing out on... I can hear the I can hear the squealing tires. They're drag racing out front. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Father. You guys wanted it. This is what you get. Ugh. 
Where's Brad? Why doesn't Brad do a five hour live? <laughs> Demonstrate how you would drown Grace. Oh, my God. I think we're alone now. Oh, this is awesome. There's no one here at the pool. Oh. I got a challenge for Big Brad Wolf, Mr. Tough Guy. Do a video of you and Grace at the pool. I mean, the fans are entitled to see what your Sundays are all about, Mr. Big Brad Wolf, Tough Guy. Yeah. You post pictures of, of your new girlfriend. You post pictures of you guys getting tattoos. You never post pictures of you and Grace on Sunday when you're forced to have custody against your will because it's in the judge decrement. <sighs> oh. This is awesome. Oh, finally relaxing. Yeah, Michigan just won. Michigan's going to the Sweet 16. Well, my challenge is to Big Red Wolf. Show a picture of you and Grace in the pool tomorrow. Listen, Big Brad Wolf, I'm a homeless truck driver, and you're supposed to be a tough guy. We're, we're, where's the pictures of you and your daughter floating around the pool, enjoying life like me? Oh, I think. Oh my God, Brett just said going for six hours. Well, Brett. When you're the mass last misfit standing, you have an obligation to your fans. <clears throat> Tell them about retards at Thanksgiving. You know, that video got me in trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh, this feels so good. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, This is a saltwater pool. Oh my God. Feels so good. Hmm. 
Okay. I'm being quiet. All right, thank. We don't want any trouble around here. Yeah. No, you young kids. I know how you guys can howl at the moon. Uh, the pool is closed from dusk till dawn. But if, if you're an old fart like me, they let it slide. Yeah. Because we're not giving them problems. Exactly. Like you, we used to do when I was a kid. Right. You behave yourself. This is the most amazing pool I've ever been in. You realize it, it's, it's salt water? And it's 85 degrees. <sighs> yeah, if you guys get crazy, I'm going to call the front desk. They just don't want the ruffians out here. You're breaking the rules. No, no, we ask. We usually don't ask permission. Because it's easier just to ask for forgiveness. You got to go down that way. All the way down. Oh, my God. For me here? No, they can't put a gate in there. It's illegal in seven states. Oh, look, Jam found it. Must not be that hard to find. That, that gate is childproof. I had a problem with it. Yeah, don't spill your coffee. Not to. Father. What is that you drink? Uh, it's a really good um, malt liquor. Oh, yeah? Well, because you, you don't go to um, the hood. You're right. <laughs> you are right about that. Yeah, th this is a, a, a fine American beer that's marketed towards urban individuals. Steel Reserve. Yeah, it, it, but it's spelled S T E E L, not S T E. -L. Yeah, it. It it's eight point one percent alcohol by volume. Wow. Wow. So, the 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 beer store owners. I don't know where you guys are from. Right. 
Well, where I'm from, we call them party stores, but up in New York, they call them uh, uh, bodegas. bodegas. Yeah, bodega store owners, they can split up a six-pack and sell these as a single. Because of the alcohol content? Yes. Michigan. We just won. We're going to the Sweet 16. What? Can't say Are you from Ohio? Yes. They call it that team up north. They don't even say it. It's that team up north. That's classic Woody Hayes. I love you. I love you. Nobody, nobody, nobody my age remembers Woody Hayes. Yeah. He also played. He also played for um, Bo Schembechler. Yeah. The University of Miami, of Ohio. Right. Schembechler was there, and he was there with Woody. And then Woody went to Ohio State, and Schembechler went to Michigan. Yes. So is he better than Colt Forty Five? Well, it's got more kick. Yeah, Woody Hayes would never say the word Michigan. It was that school up north. Oh. Where in Michigan are you from? Detroit suburbs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Detroit area. What city? I don't know. Oh, that that's Michigan State country. It doesn't matter. Michigan. <laughs> Michiganders. Oh, God. He said the word. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Father. <laughs> Brady played for Michigan. Yeah. That's what I thought. Did he really? Was that? That you knew where he was calling, but no one knows everywhere. Yeah. Don knows all the colleges. Yeah. Yeah. My grandson. Talk to him on the phone and you can tell by his eyes. Cooper and I had a bad because like a home golf rainbow. Oh, so where's his hair yeah. like that? They, they played Buffalo. Buffalo. He's moving home. They played Buffalo. Like 
Oh, I would probably in love in first grade. That's what you said. Good one. You like I actually element. I know. I actually wrote. I love you. Do you love me? Certainly won't. Yes. I wrote one of those notes. I gave you. Still I do. Did you send it back? No. She's wild as a dog. Screenshot that. Look at that green beard. That's amazing. <laughs> that that was I that was piss. <laughs> Talking to yourself? No, I'm filming myself on, on YouTube. I got 159 people watching. I know. I, I've been live for five hours, 23 minutes, and five seconds. And I still have 156 people watching. Well, I started out in my room. I walked to the Circle K, got beer and smokes. <laughs> Say hello to your follow. Hello, followers. They call me father. Yes, but it, it, it comes from um, way long ago back in Michigan when we were at deer hunting camp and I was real drunk. No, go on. And, and we were at deer camp with a huge bonfire going and I, I said, Father, come forth from the fire. So it stuck. No. Right. Father never came forth. What the heck is with the dog covered up at the other end? Handicap. Oh, fuck, that's amazing. I know. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. Father. Getting loud in the city. Oh. Film her feet. No, I'm not doing that. I'll tell you what. The, that previous couple that was down here, that, that old lady had nice feet. Father, I know. Oh, no, then it's not. We got to break a record. I got to. 
we're at five hours, 26 minutes. Grace Murray on Thanksgiving is happy as Uncle Jay in the pool. <clears throat> Ask them if Grace should be euthanized. <laughs> I know that video was taken completely out of context. <sighs> I got to play it cool, bro. This is amazing. I can go have smoke. <clears throat> Father. Father smoking. No, no. Ask them about Jason. No one, no, no one knows who Jason is. I'm father. Vacant eyes. Reminds me of a song by the Rolling Stones. The Girl with Faraway Eyes. That's a great song by the Rolling Stones. Faraway Eyes. If you guys want to be creative, quote some lyrics from the Rolling Stones. Faraway Eyes. I was driving through Bakersfield. Big Papa Pump says, greatest song ever. Yes. Far Away Eyes by the Rolling Stones is an incredible song. <laughs> I was like, 
ten cents. Excuse me. This is the pot on top out. All right, I got. Oh, you do. Best song is Sympathy for the Devil. Yeah, that's a good one too. But Far Away Eyes is more relative to the current situation. Rolling Stones are the best band ever. Period. Simple Man by the Charlie Daniels Band. Simple Man is, is Leonard Skinner. That's okay. It's okay. So fucking drunk. That Zeppelin's okay, but. Rolling Stones are the best. I got a beer. Dodge Swinger, 1973, Galaxy 500. There we go. Someone's someone's quoting Clutch from Clutch's original album. Jesus on the dashboard. I'm, I'm trying to get the Cuban to get a Jesus for his dashboard. Jason Genova's armpit says, Father, go get a tattoo. Why would I do that and be a cookie cutter? Oh my God, Brett just said white skin needs no tattoos. I agree with that. Video Games says white is right, Father. Fuck, that's awesome. Yes. 
So drunk. I would be serious. <laughs> I, I think what I'm going to do. This is really hard. Where's Brad? Where's Brad? Brad and Taco Queen don't entertain you guys. You got to come on here and troll me. Father, I'm tired. <laughs> First time he shows up, he shows up in the room. Okay? He's only told it. He's up, but he's tired. Well, and they got the phone to me. Anyway, drop back and I'm filling the area. I'm on fire. I'm walking back and pissing in my pants. He's a poor <laughs> My cock is everywhere. My cock is so unhappy with his own life. He has to create fake accounts and and try and infiltrate my chat chat group. That's a crime on my cock, not a crime on me. McCuck is such a sack of garbage that he can't be happy with his mail order bride and his defective kids that he he has to come up with fake accounts and try and infiltrate my 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 private chat group. That's on him. That's not on me. Cuck is so unhappy in his life, marrying a cleaning lady and having half Spanish kids, that he has to infiltrate my private chat group 
with fake accounts. Come on, man. McCook is half Dominican. Uh, I'll tell you, McCook looks like an Armenian fucking dog. McCook lifestyle mirrors Rocky. Oh, God. Brett says he's dodging. What's your question, Brett? I think Brett is an Adam McLeod fan. Cloud is in chastity. You guys got it opposite. McLeod married a cleaning lady so that he could be the dominant force in his marriage. McLeod literally married a cleaning lady that didn't speak English. Poor McCuck. I'm too buzzed to go to the bar. Anna McCuck, wife, allegedly had a, an affair with Roger and Human Resources at the same office. Right. The cock is so angry. He married a fucking cleaning lady from his office. Because that's all he can get is a cleaning lady. The illegal alien. But she wears a short dress. I'm going to go back to my room. I'm tired. Father.
Father. Let me just preface that by saying we do want to go down and walk all over the country. May God pull out. Yes, I'm very tired. So thirty two to eight point seven. Father, will Mary Ann be there? I piss myself. Tomorrow's family day. Are we going to see any Brad videos or Taco Clean videos with Grace? Come on, man. It's Sunday. It's family day. Don't be embarrassed to your family. It's your family. Come on, man. It's family. In particular, yeah. You're checking out and they want a donation. It bothers me. It doesn't bother me because we.
Oh, orange cross. Now that sounds further than I can do. Tomorrow's family day. I want everyone to show respect so that Brad and the Taco Queen can post videos with Grace. Show some respect. It's family day. All right, Sunday is family day. Family day. Big Sunday family dinner at Brad's parents' house. Who would like to be there? Why don't they film it? Why? Why? Um, why don't they film it? Why doesn't Brad film Family Day? You look horrific. I know I'm fucking smashed. Brad's a big tough guy. Come on, man. Brad Brad wants to have sex with my mother. Why, why can't he show videos of his parents and his daughter? Come on, Brad. You're not so tough now, are you? Tough guy, Brad. I'm so tough. I got a beard. I got tattoos. I'm a tough guy. On Sundays, you hide like a little girl. Right, Brett. Exactly. Father's mother is off limits. Brad is getting what he gives. He wants to bring up family? Let's bring up family. If my mother's fair game for Brad's videos, well, then his family is fair game on my videos. Come on, Brad. Big Sunday dinner at the Murray family household in Boca Raton. I feel bad for the taco queen. She didn't sign up to be second fiddle to a retarded child. Every Sunday is dedicated to a retarded child. When's taco time? I mean, come on, man.
When is taco time? Brad delivers the mail Monday through Saturday. And then every Sunday is devoted to his retarded daughter at his parents' house. When is taco time? She's eventually going to not stand for that anymore. I'm going to go back in the pool. But to piss myself. <clears throat> I'm 6'11", 96 pounds. Nice. Father. I'm so drunk. I can't make it to my room without pissing. I gotta go back in the pool. Father. Lost all control of my bladder. Poor Brad. I know. Oh my God, this pool is so fucking warm. Oh, I can't even walk. I don't even want any more beer. I'm hungry. And we just broke the six hour mark. And, and Brad is still a coward and won't film Family Day. Huh. I have to go to my room and eat. Hamburg, Florida, April, remember? Shit. Father. Uh, 
I'm taunting bread. Well, while I'm living in luxury in a hotel on my Sunday, Brad is going to be picking up a disabled child and going to his parents' house and doing quote unquote family time. It, it, is family time changing diapers and filling a feeding tube? Come on, Brad. It, it, it's time to say you're sorry. Say, you're just a weaker male that gets tattoos and grows a beard because you're, you're inferior and you feel inferior to everybody and your mistakes with, with how you have children and what you do with relationships has ruined your life. I mean, come on, man. You're better off staying with your first wife, no matter how bad it was. I mean, they're all over 18 now. What the fuck went wrong, brah? If you could have just stuck it out and got divorced now, you'd have no child support. Both your kids from your first marriage are over 18. But now you're fucked. You got a child support on a disabled child. And now you, now you got a, a chick with an 11 year old living in your house with no reasonable income. What she do? Cut hair, bartends, does nails. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend bartends and she does hair and nails out of the house. Great. That's what I'm looking for too, bro. You fucking idiot. A fucking moron. Cynthia has more jobs. Father. Mm. Cynthia is a hard worker. I don't know Cynthia. No. Oh my God, Justin Robertson said he should apologize to his parents. Oh my God, you're right. Like I'm, imagine the burden Brad has put his parents through, taking that retard there every Sunday. Brad's parents didn't sign up for that. <laughs> How many grandparents wish they had a retarded child to take care of every Sunday? Shitting everywhere. Dirty diapers. Drooling. I mean, come on, man. I can't think of any grandparents that wish they had a retarded grandchild like Brad. Think, oh, yeah. My son Brad is coming over. He's bringing his retarded child every Sunday for years. I mean, years he brings her over. He pours this shit in her feeding tube and she shits all over the place. 
for years. I think Brad's parents want that. Come on, man. Nobody wants that. Oh. I've had enough. Have a good night, buddy. Did you turn off those followers? Are they still following you? No, I'm still filming. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been live for over six hours. I've got 163 people still Jeez. watching. Wow. Yeah, they're... they're... can't hang on. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Hold the elevator. My phone's on the five percent. Did you get it? All right. I did. I got it. Thank you. Dad. Grandpa, I pooped the bed again. Oh, it's okay, Grace. Nobody wants that.
Oh, Grandpa. I shit all over the floor. Oh, it's okay, Grace. Mom, my daughter shit all over the floor. Oh, it's okay, Brad. We still love you. Come on, man. When is enough enough? Oh, where's my remote? I need Fox News. Oh. Father. My daughter shit the floor. Oh, Brad, we'll clean it up. Come on. I can't find my remote. Can't turn on the television without the remote. No, my phone's going to die. I'm under 5%. Oh, Brad. It's okay. You guys are family. We don't mind. But mom, my daughter shit all over the fucking house. Oh, your family. I seriously can't find the remote to the TV. Oh, fuck. Yeah. You guys want me to plug in my phone? Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, Mom. My daughter shit all over the house. Oh, it's okay, Brad. We'll clean it up. Mm. Yeah, it's okay, Brad. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. My mama. I still can't find the TV remote. Fuck. Oh, Father, you guys are idiots. Yeah, we're really into Brad, you know, Jay. Jay, why did you bring, why did you break up the misfits, Jay? Who are you, Adam McLeod? Who would say that except McCook? Honestly. (laughs) 
Jay is the Misfits currently. I wouldn't say that. The Misfits are dead, bro. Brad killed the Misfits. I'm ready to do a reunion right now. Right now. You you message fucking cuckold Brad, Lenny, Andrew, and I guarantee you, you're going to get at least two no's. Jay for Trenfinger is the leak. I find that hard to believe. What's he leaking? Tell me something Jay Trenfinger has told everybody that's so bad. Oh. I seriously can't find the remote. I'm ready to have dinner. I'm using a lighter. Mm. I know. This is stupid. So fucking hungry. Mm. Fuck. I have to turn on the light. Father. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Now I'm pissed. I want to get out of these wet shorts. so smashed I can't even turn on a light. The mm. bread is God, who keeps texting me jealous of bread? Jesus Christ. There we go. Where's the fuck is the remote? I'm so jealous of Brad. I don't know anybody that, that, that wants a tattooed up skank living in their house. So who's jealous of Brad? I seriously can't find the remote to the TV. Fuck. Oh, it's on the floor. So who who keeps saying I'm jealous of bread? Let's address that. Mm. 
Okay, I finally got the TV on. Oh. I'm back. Oh, yeah. Ugh. I got out of that wet bathing suit. Oh. Chuck E. Cheese. Quoting some good classic rock. Ugh. All right. Back to what we were talking about. This is prosciutto wrapped mozzarella. So good. So tell me again how you guys think I'm jealous of Brad. Mm. I want to hear it. This is good food right here. I don't know who it is texting me. Must be McLeod or, or maybe Hamburg or maybe Brad himself. But who in the fuck in their right mind thinks I'm jealous of Brad? Mm. Can we focus on the facts? So, you got a guy, you know, I'm not going to knock the guy's job. He's got a great job, great benefits, security, pension. You know, he's he's locked into a disabled child's uh, child, you know, support for the rest of her life. Then he, he, he brings in a bimbo who's got an 11 year old of her own. So now he's supporting the two of them. You guys. Tell me how I'm jealous of that. Start from the beginning, please. Because I'd like to hear it. Mm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, someone's texting me that. That I'm jealous of Brad. Come on, man. You know what I'm doing tomorrow on my Sunday? Sleeping in. Oh, my bed, my hotel. Just sleeping in. I got two beers left. I'm not even going to drink them. I'll, I'll leave them for the, you know, Anna McLeods of the world to clean hotels. I'm, I'm sure Anna McLeod has a cousin that, that cleans hotels in this city. Yeah, I'm so jealous of Brad. You know, instead of having um, a life of leisure on the weekends, I kind of wish by court order I had to spend time with with a disabled child. That would be great. I mean, who doesn't want that? Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Publix chicken and wild rice soup. <coughs> After I had my prosciutto and mozzarella. <laughs> Dinner of champions. No, but honestly, everyone thinks I'm jealous of bread. <laughs> <coughs> Brad's a great guy. <laughs> but who thinks I'm jealous of bread? Mm. Mm. How many of you guys really wish if you could change your life? I'm taking off the bandage from giving blood. Uh, if you guys could change your life, how many of you guys would spend every Sunday <clears throat> with your disabled child at your parents' house. Okay, right, nobody. Let's move on. I'm waiting for someone to say, I would. I'd love to have every Sunday with my disabled child at my parents' house. Hmm. <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> um, McCuck laughed at me. I'd, I'd like to see McCuck laugh in my face. Not in a boxing ring with no gloves. Adam McLeod is a tough guy on the internet. You guys, I I should have punched him in the fucking face in Spanish River Park when I fucking went up and confronted him before the gloves went on. When I was standing fucking six inches taller than him and his little bodyguard Lou, little fat boy Lou, his bodyguard.
Did you see what Hamburg said on McCook's live? No, McCook has me banned. I think. I don't know. Hmm. Father, describe the moment Brad saw when Grace came out. I don't think Brad was there. I think Brad was probably at some bar pretending the whole thing didn't happen. All right. <sighs> oh god I feel bad for Lou. He's so insecure about going to like some division five college to play football. Being an absolute nobody. Where did Lou play football? Like Cape Cod, Southwest Cape Cod, State University, I mean, I mean, Lou likes to brag about all the tackles he made in college football. Who did he play? Like University of Connecticut of the Nuns? <coughs> New Hampshire stepchilds. Mm. Mm. Lou's awesome. Just let Lou keep thinking he's awesome. Lou one time made five tackles against the uh, Vermont School of the Blind. <laughs> That's okay, I mean... If your claim to fame is five tackles against the Vermont School of the Blind, that's fine. Oh, I need Fox News. I'm stuck on the Weather Channel. <clears throat> I'm going to go to bed. <coughs> oh, my God. Something went down the wrong pipe. <coughs> it was a cock. <clears throat> oh, yeah, better be careful of Lou. He played, he played football for Middle Massachusetts State College of the fucking poor. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, 
Seriously, does anyone know who Lou played football for? <coughs> Was it Middle Massachusetts School of the Poor? I, I don't know. <coughs> All right, I'm ready to call it bad. Oh, my God. <coughs> Boca Raton School of the Retarded. Right. Oh. Mm. Uh. <coughs> wait wait till wait till grace turns 18 and the public schools kick her to the curb and her care starts to become really expensive great heather is gonna fuck brad over <coughs> Once the public school system, meaning you, the taxpayer, stops paying for grace, you know who takes over the burden? Brad. <coughs> oh. You guys can say I'm jealous of Brad all you want. <coughs> Fuck. Uh, just think of how old is Grace now? Like 12? Oh, just wait. Once she's 18 <coughs> and, the, and the public schools kick her to the curb and say there's nothing else we can do for her. And that her care becomes really expensive. <coughs> Because the, the, the burden will be taken off the taxpayers and be put on the parents where it should be. Who do you think Heather is going to get to pay for that? You think she's going to pay for it or you think she's going to go after Brad? I don't know. Oh, fuck. What's it, what's it cost to take care of a retarded child a year? Because <laughs> right now, you and I, the taxpayers, are paying the most of it. Because I'm, I'm sure Heather sends her off to public school every day, <laughs> which is wrong. I'd like to put an end to that. Well, once she's 18... That burden is going to go on the parents, and she's going to go after Brad. <clears throat> Fuck. I had some rice go down the wrong hole. Oh. 
I'm going to be sleeping so good tonight. Oh. I I got cigarettes. I'm not smoking no more. Uh. <gasps> John Smith, I turned Lou and Rob Zilla in for fraud. Amazing. Uh. No, but those of you guys that have a brain, I want you to work this out through your head and do the math. Right now, Brad's daughter is being pushed through the public school system so the taxpayers pay for her aides, probably eight hours a day, all right? So that burden is on us. Once the local school district says, yeah, we've done all we can for her. She's an adult now. Now it's your problem. Now it becomes the parent's problem. Or Social Security disability. Which Grace has never paid a penny into. Um, so it's still on us, the taxpayers or at least those of us who work. And SSD, Social Security Disability, isn't gonna pay for all of it. So Heather is gonna, is gonna be stuck with the bill and she's gonna fucking go back to court and go after Brad. Brad's gonna be stuck with the bill. At that point, once Brad is fucked, Taco Queen's going to be like, oh, this doesn't seem so sweet anymore. This, this guy is, is, is dumping all this coin to pay for a retarded a, a child who's an adult. You know, my kid's out of high school. My kid's raised. I, I, I you know, I use this guy for a good house, good upbringing good school district while my kid was in school you know fuck these aren't my problems there you go all right uh. Mm. Those are funny. Justin Bieber's wife suffered a blood clot? What the fuck? Why is that news? <clears throat> I'm about ready. I'm about ready to crawl into bed. Yeah. 
Alec Baldwin's daughter. That's some good soup right there. No, I can't drink no more Steel Reserve. I've already had dinner. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm so jealous of Brad. I just want to go to bed. Pea soup is the best. Ah, I, I don't mind a bowl of pea soup. I like all soup. Soup is, is good. Oh, but I don't, man, pea soup is okay. If I'm going to have pea soup, you know, I want a, a, a grilled ham and cheese with it or something good. I'm sleepy. Everyone say good night. Yes. Sing us a lullaby, Father. I don't know one. Closing time. You don't have to. Finish your whiskey or your beer. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. That's the only lullaby I know. Oh. That's a cuckold song. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to sleep so good tonight. Mm. Mm. Will you guys call me in the morning and wake me up? when Brad has to pick up Grace for visitation, mandatory visitation, state ordered. I'm not going to die. I'm healthy as a horse. Um, uh, I'm not getting more beer. Right, I'm getting ready to end this. I'm just trying to... Hush, little baby. Don't say a word. I like that. Chances of Jay pissing the bed. Uh, pretty good actually. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm over and out. I can't believe there's 178 of you guys. You guys are the best. I got the best fans in the Genova verse. Anybody who says I don't, is a moron. Look at you guys. 179 proud. 
and we're at four hours and 30 minutes. Amazing. I love you guys. I seriously do.